Welcome to the Visual Cast. I'm your host, Alone Hammer, aka Rim. Today on the cast, we have Brandon Thompson, aka Sauce Monster. He's one of my closest friends here in California, an extremely stand up human being, and one of the funniest people you'll meet. Me and Brandon go pretty deep into it. We talk a lot about different VJing and mapping techniques. We talk about Brandon's upbringing in a musical family and his discovery of visuals through music. And we talk a lot about touch designer. And for Brandon's set, we do a deep dive into Unreal and Houdini and the way Brandon uses those tools. It's super interesting and very cool. It was awesome to see the positive feedback from episode one. And as the audience grows, we too will grow and start doing these as streams and create an interactive experience for the audience. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy the visual cast. The world is like a ride at an amusement park and it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time and they begin to question, is this real or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered and they come back to us and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid ever because this is just a ride. Okay, so welcome to Visual Cast. Um, I'm really excited. Today we have one of my favorite people in the world. Um, his name is Brandon Thompson, aka Sauce Monster. Extremely talented and amazing um, artist. Uh, he is very multidisciplinary, um, so I'm really interested to see where this conversation goes. Uh, and he happens to be a really good friend of mine. So um, without any further ado, please welcome Brandon Thompson. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to um, the podcast. I'm so happy you're here. Um, it's really nice to see you. Hey. And um, yeah, I, I think let's just jump right into it. When you were younger and you were starting out, did you ever think that you would follow this as a career, be a, an artist as a career? Uh, like absolutely not like looking back to being like a kid or something. Um, you know, I was always interested. I drew and, and I made videos and I did, but I never, it, there was no computer involved ever. Um, you know, always used them, but it wasn't really... I didn't think about it. And then I guess computer came along with just in relation to music. Um, and then when I was like 19, no, in my twenties, I started like, uh, looping instruments and, uh, it just occurred to me that it's boring to watch somebody loop instruments. <laughs> so, so like I wanted to make, and I was into the idea of like synesthesia kind of always. And, I just decided like, oh, I could like, maybe I'm using this new thing. You know, MIDI was new to me. And uh, I'm using MIDI and I have this program Ableton. This is like Ableton 5. And I'm like, how do you connect like MIDI to video? And this is 2005 mm. when, when I Super early. looked that up. Yeah, so I found this dude, um, Surya Buckwald, who... Uh, ran this site called uh, VJ Kung Fu. And uh, he had a video on how to hook a mono to uh, to Ableton and VDMX. And it all started there. And that was just like VDMX plus Ableton and just triggering through Ableton VDMX scenes was just like 10 years of my life and I loved it. It's like, <laughs> was a cool the shit. So, okay. So you said that you were, uh, first fascinated by music, um, and then kind of found the connection of like, okay, this is like, uh, this is fun, but I want to see something. Was that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Actually it was like a dude at a, at a music store that I was talking to about looping, like loop pedals had just come out. And I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm messing with this. And I really, I'm having a lot of fun. And he was like, yeah, I just saw Keller Williams, who was this dude in the jam band scene at the time. And he was sick. Um, 
But the guy was like, it was an awesome show, but like there was nothing to look at right. at times. Like you just want to see the performance and there wasn't that. And I was like, easy. <laughs> yeah. Easy. I was like, I'll add that. And I figured, you know, like in a couple months, I'll be there. And here we are. So and that like, was, uh, was that like the first time that you married, <laughs> that you married um, audio and visual was kind of this, um, cause you, you were a musician first and then you kind of found it based on like you, it was almost yeah, like you no, needed was it. Like, it was missing for you. Like I was making music videos mm. at that point with like final cut and yeah, like I was having a lot of fun editing together videos and it, and then the, the challenge was just like, well, how do I get videos, <laughs> you know? And back in the day, that was like quite a challenge. Like, there was like the internet archives, you know, and right. all of my visuals just ended up being like weird throwbacks to like space in the fifties. Cause it's like the <laughs> only cool thing you yeah. could find there. Yeah, I don't it's, know. Um, what's that? What's it called when uh, something becomes uh, like after a certain amount of time, like Mickey, Mickey mouse just became, what is the word? Uh, oh yeah. 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 Um, like it, comment. It, com somebody watching. Uh, yeah. Comment. Yeah, exactly. He's like, it's called <laughs> this idiots um but yeah that was like the internet archives had all that stuff i remember I, I also would go down that rabbit hole of like okay what can i find that's cool and psychedelic here and then cut it up um there really wasn't much i mean you know the, the most yeah. of the archive stuff is like black and white cartoon shit from like the 20s yeah 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 it's, i guess as time really progresses it becomes more and more and stuff yeah and then after that like you know vimeo came out you know, and then you could just like rip stuff, steal high quality art from people, yeah, <laughs> and uh, mix that together. But like, yeah, I mean, it was just like, where do I get the video? And for a while, the idea was like green screen everything. Mm. And I, I had several houses with like the whole whole green screen rooms. I loved green screening for a while. Uh, but wait, wait, wait. Like, talk, talk me through I... that. Talk me through that. You so you would you would record content on a green screen and then use it in a mix yeah so like i had everything running through vdmx so i had it very modular like set up to all my songs were like um like fired out of the opposite side view of ableton which is nobody uses it's okay. like the clip launcher um and it's like gridded so you have like 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 say like verses choruses bridges intros things like okay. that like going this direction and then you have like instruments like this so mm -hmm. you're like gridded so you could fire like the drums from the chorus before you're at the chorus if you wanted to and so like the drums would be hooked to like one visual and then the instrumentation would be hooked to another one and like it made it all like kind of you know procedural once you set it up like I could change the order of the song, but like the would video stay. would function properly. Wow, that's so cool. And this is, so you yeah. were going from Ableton into VDMX with MIDI? Yeah, yeah. And like, and OSC. And OSC already back then, huh? Yeah, so OSC was just starting back then. Like, um, yeah, yeah, I remember it. Recently, I uh, I got into a discussion with like another person that works in the industry and they were like, OSC stands for open source control. <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, no, nah, it stands for open sound. Yeah. And they were very sure about it. Yeah. But um, Sound, I was, but I use I this like, for video. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, nah, man. But like, I didn't want to be like petty right. and then just look it up and be like, ha, 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 you're yeah. wrong. So I was just like, I'm probably wrong. But it's not. It's definitely sound. It's oh, definitely yeah. sound. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. sound. Yeah, I think I think OSC was um, the original kind of like uh, s like software MIDI, like before you know yeah, MIDI I mean, like, is very hardware dependent. Um, I think well, MIDI is only uh, MIDI is only this is, was a shock to me at first. Like MIDI is 128 bit, right? right. So you can't you Zero can't encode anything. Is so like the first thing that I would be trying to do was like control the timeline of a whole song, and I, I was like. Well, clearly, you could just like draw a beginning and an end to a track, and then if you chop up the pieces while well, you're controlling the time, but it doesn't work like that. 
because if you're trying to play like a three minute song and you have 128 points to reference it that's not good enough for right. video video needs more reference points per so, frame or at least per you know so, yeah for the frame so zero to 128 is not enough but zero to one is digital and it's infinite mm. there's infinite points between zero and one and there's only 128 in the integer points between yeah, in, MIDI. in midi i wonder yeah. did um did vdmx have the like because like in touch right or in most node-based programs now like you could just take any uh range and like remap it was that not oh, an yeah. option back then oh yeah that's an option but there's nothing there's no info to remap oh because you don't have right right because you're just you yeah it's like it's not a float i mean it's not it's not it's not a float it's like literally an integer there's nothing in between an in, in integer yeah right, that makes yeah. that makes total sense yeah that's and funny I didn't how like the integer thing until this conversation like i did it's funny it's funny well you don't like stuff. when you think about like what midi is right it's literally like triggers like very like mm -hmm. okay maybe knobs and stuff right but like Mostly, you're just triggering things and causing the well, computer. No one to... knob is like 128 little mini triggers. Right, the mini triggers exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's so interesting how like um like the advent of digital uh, data versus like analog data is so much more powerful, and it's kind of like I guess back then people were like oh OSC that's that's lame because it's not real you know or some shit like that somebody was probably saying that, but it's oh, it's dude, funny back how then... yeah. It was way worse than that. It was like people were just like, they saw a computer and they were mad, uh, yeah. you know, like for real. Like I was coming from like, I've always been from like traditional music. Like, I don't know how many years I spent in this fucking stupid battle in my head against <laughs> you... like, what's the, the, uh, uh, does it, uh, is it oh, like, does it, is it valid? <laughs> like, does it matter? Am I an artist so if it's on the computer? Um, yeah, it's... yeah. I'm so flipped on the other side right now. Like I really like look at it as like a downside. Like mm. like I have a problem with myself that like I have trouble respecting non-computer art. Mm. For real. Right. For real. For real. Um yeah, like um Well before before we yeah. get into the art question cuz that's a, definitely a Go whole topic. It. I want to ask you a little bit more about your life before. So music. Um you know, I know your history of music, but I'd love for other people to know it. Um, you know, you're, you're, you come, for those who don't know, Brandon comes from a long line of musicians, highly professional and um, talented musicians. I always, you know, I always wondered with you, was it a, was it a tough like thing for you to be like, okay, I'm going to do audio visual was there like some sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, was it a little bit of a difficult thing to, you know, quote unquote, come out to your family about? Because your family is so musical. Um, and uh, yeah, just just walk us through that. I mean, like, you know, what is yeah, your family? They're also really, yeah, they're also really open minded. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, so nobody would ever like give me shit about it, but I can tell that it exists because like to me, like, I know that my dad and my stepdad, um, who are both like, um, who both knew each other. That's messy. But <laughs> they, they like were super into synths, like together and writing mm -hmm. patches, like in the 70s when synths were like the thing. And what blows my mind is just that, like, I could not get these two human beings interested in any of this in any way to say and it's it's synthesizers like right touch designer is a synth like right. it's the same stuff and it just blows my mind that the the like the interest isn't really there so i don't see it as like don't do that but i see it as like they don't really get it mm. <laughs> and in turn it's like made me sort of like have this like defense mechanism like for instance my uh my little brother right he plays um in high heaven he plays uh like music for uh the president of the united states right now for joe biden while he's like asleep or whatever and uh, <laughs> uh wait and, like isn't uh, the president of the united states donald j trump well i mean he's my president yeah not, he's my president. They, we didn't win on the sixth well so. <laughs> well 
That's what they say. Okay, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, man. Is it You're... too early in the interview for me to grab the hat? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll get to that. But, um, like, you... so... Anyway, my little brother plays for the president and like uh, anybody, he plays the bass for the president's band and people will hear that and be like, oh, my God. But to me, it's like it's the year 2020. I literally just had to think about it, <laughs> yeah. but it's 2024. And do you think like like my brother is like a master's in the bass, which right. is like a goat goat guts over a gourd. You know, like it's, it's, an, it, and, and you're like, you're like, I'm in a master's program to channel all of my brain power into the end of these two nubs to articulate them with, it's bro. It's like ridiculous. Ta right. It's so ridiculous there. It's a, there's an end to the bass guitar. It would be sick to get, I, I grew up playing bass and like, it would was be that, sick to was it your first there, instrument like 300 years early. What's up? Was it your first instrument? Uh, that and guitar kind of came at the same time. Mm. Uh, first instrument was drums, though. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Drums being your first instrument, and that's the first instrument of your little boy, which is interesting, too. For me, it comes down to practicality. Like, nobody <laughs> handed me drums when I was not even two years old, uh -huh. which I did to my kid. Uh, but wait a second, wait a second. When you were, but when you were a kid, didn't you see all around you like music happening? Like, was it not part of your growing up? Like just naturally? It was part of my growing up for sure. It was everywhere, but uh, nobody, it wasn't like anybody was like, hey, Brandon, here. Right. In fact, it was the opposite because my mom, my mom grew up like um, mixed race. Like she, my mom's half black born in like 48. What? Um, and um and um and so like back then like my grandma who was the white one she was like what do i do with the my little you know half breed kids like <laughs> yeah. how will anybody ever accept them <laughs> and um and she was like oh i know i'll make them little minstrel kids <laughs> so she was like a singer and she um she kind of like Jacksoned my mom, like like Joe Sorry, Jackson did to the Jacks. Like, oh yeah, my, yeah, yeah. The they Jackson. had to like practice all the time. Like music was like they were little performer kids, and right. so my mom was like, a uh, reaction to that was like, I'm never gonna push music on my kid. Oh, interesting. So it was yeah, like never. It was never pushed on me. I had to like pursue it myself. Interesting. And, like, and then like when I was little, like the, the first memory i have of like interacting with a with uh musical gear was like i was at my parents like work and all the all the instruments are set up there's like the drummers like a huge drum set set up and uh like i'm going crazy on the drums <laughs> in a room by myself and like the dude like the guys in the band walk in and they were like they were like um I was, oh, I was like, oh, I was stoked. I was like, ah, oh, I've never practiced before. <laughs> like impressed with myself as like a right. little kid, like a little kid. And they were like, wow, you can hardly tell. And they like <laughs> snickered. Like I could tell that they were making fun of me. Oh, bro. It just wrecked me. <laughs> that's so funny. Maybe that, maybe that's why you're like, fuck these guys. I'm going to get the digital visual stuff into here. Yeah, <laughs> show my family members what's what. I don't know. No, that was because like, you know, like, like a loop pedal's going to show up to practice and like not fuck your girlfriend. You know, like <laughs> loop pedals are way easier than drummers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny that's like a good um advertisement for like being like a, a digital artist of like you yeah. don't have to deal with anybody trying to fuck your girlfriend your computer is <laughs> your friend you know yeah 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 although i yeah. don't know with the advent of like where the world is going it's very possible yeah, that our, our computers will start fucking our girlfriends oh my god it's gonna be such a thing when your girl starts fucking your computer yeah like With he, your girl. they it's give me more. Yeah, he gives I me meant. more, uh, more attention than you, and he knows me so well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
He nerd stops whoever. talking when I tell him to stop talking. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, my digital girlfriend doesn't talk at all. <laughs> um, yeah, it's really cool to... to oh, dude, it would be your phone, though. It would be your if phone? If your girl was hooking up with your computer, it wouldn't be through your computer. It would be like, so? all of a sudden, you're like, no, we're not getting that many calls that your phone's vibrating throughout the night. Uh, but I'm... Ch- yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was going to say, I think it's really fascinating um, that you, you know as someone who came from such a musical environment and such a musical background, understood the importance and saw the future in some way um, of this connection, of this marriage of audiovisual. And I'd say that, like, you know, it's not like audiovisual is like a 21st century thing. You know, Pink Floyd had visuals in all of their shows. Mm-hmm. Grateful Dead had visuals. I'd probably... Oh, and, uh, and you could even go yeah, pre... I you know, you could even go pre-music and go to like cinema, right? Like the first advent of cinema was the marriage. Like, you know, the, the first movie that was shown in a movie theater was The Train. Have you ever heard of this story? No. So the first time they showed a movie, I think I think it was in France, if I'm not mistaken. But there was a uh, basically a clip of a, a video of somebody that caught a train coming into a train station and the people in the movie theater freaked the fuck out. They all like, they're like, oh, we're going to get hit by this train. People like left their seats, ran away. They were all so scared by this train coming into the station. Um, but it was because it was on such a big screen for the first time. And I think that audio had a very big, I mean, I guess audio didn't exist in film at that, at that era. But when it did come back, you know, in the first talking movies or whatever, I think it was such a big shift of like, um, of understanding of like media and how we relate to it. Uh, that it was just a natural thing for music to become this kind of audiovisual experience. Um, yeah, no, that's super interesting. The train story is funny. It makes yeah. me feel like people back in the day were like turkey Dumb. drown from looking up at the rain level <laughs> stupid. Yeah, yeah. But like, well, they, oh, all, they, no, they all just got out of the factory with their fucking black lung. They're probably like <laughs> coughing to death. They're like, oh, the train. <laughs> <laughs> But dude, yeah, like I saw like, um, like I loved like the, the tons of people had like sick, amazing video, like um, Tool had oh, crazy yeah. video back in the day. And that then like great. Primus, Primus was one of the ones that was like, I was like, oh my God, I got to have video in a show. They always had video. And then years later, I got to tour with them and it was cool because it was like, literally this like the guy's still doing the same thing that i saw when i was like wow. 15 what were you He's using the same clips what were you doing with them in the tour with primus um so i was touring with beats antique and then beats antique uh did a track with primus um really which yeah which That's led cool. me to to one of the funniest like uh one of the most interesting like realizations uh, of I'll explain, but like the the um they've toured with like with Primus and uh yeah, like uh yeah, I just we did like a couple like a run with them. That's so like, cool. For sure. So were you I, I have a bunch of questions about Beats Antique, but do, were you um running visuals for Beats and Primus or was it just kind of like a they just came No, I was stage? running the Beats visuals and um and yeah, like we were just doing all the shows together. So That's actually, so cool. the first night of performances, Les Claypool made me his uh, his bong tech or his <laughs> pipe tech. He has like a like a little glass Sherlock, and he was like, "Here, can you hold this?" I when I first met the guy, I was like, "What do you say to somebody that you genuinely like? Is genuinely you're gonna about to meet your hero?" Right. What and I say? was like, I was like, um, you. Um, I was like, you, I don't want to tell him like something generic. So I, I was like, you inspired a life of interest in obscure vocabulary because <laughs> I didn't know what the hell druthers meant. And there's a song DMV where he's talking about being at the DMV and he says, and if I had my druthers, I'd screw a chimpanzee, call it pointless. So... Wow. Yeah, uh, Druthers, uh, it, it's just like, if you had your way, 
if you had you, your way. I didn't. I didn't know that. Word. Yeah, you're, it's if it serious, was your choice, um, you'd fuck a monkey. Primus, what saying. Um, deep dive here. Isn't Primus the guys that did um, the South Park uh, intro song? It's Primus. Yeah, right? they do the. Yeah. Yeah. Going down South Park, I have my something. That's like um. Yeah. You know, that's. I don't really know Primus so well. I know of them, but I never. Yeah, I never really got into that music until later on. Even Tool, I only got into Tool when I was in my late twenties. I was like, "What? Where has this been my whole life?" You oh know? man, Tools. Yeah, Tools, great. Yeah, I like tools them a lot. Shit. Okay, um, so I have another question for you, because that, that's what we're doing here: asking questions yeah. and answering them. Um, this is a little bit of an esoteric question. I'm interested to see what your answer is, but, um, so what was the first real paid client that you had and um what was the feeling of receiving value for something that up until then was just a creative uh release or a creative venture i mean honestly my first paying client was probably i guess obscura digital or beats antique um would have been my first paying client i think like i it's never been about money to like a problematic degree with me like when I learned everything and was working on everything for for like 10 years, I didn't try to do anything professionally with anything. And I would like look at jobs. I just waited tables because that made the bills. But um, and like, yeah, I just never, never thought about making money with it. Never. It, I'm so like art. I'm an artist about it or whatever the hell um, that I like. I'm like, I, I don't value it. I don't know. Well, was but there yeah. was there a moment when you did get paid that you're like, oh, shit, this is something that I was just fucking around with. And now I'm actually doing it for work. Was there a. Literally, the first time I got paid was working on that beats thing, which I got because um, of Surya and he had seen all the stuff that I had done and they were looking for somebody with like a pretty abstract skill set at the time mm -hmm. and but when i got there um it was obscure digital at sort of like their height and they like eventually like were sold to you know madison square garden and grew into like the sphere yeah um but but like at the time they were like the biggest thing going um in like crazy visual stuff mm -hmm. and they like it was actually like the whole beach show that I did was actually a response because um, Obscura Digital turned down um, um, Amon Tobin um, and the, the DJ. What's that? The, 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 yeah, the, you know that his tour yeah, that yeah, yeah, blew yeah. up on Blue? What I don't know. Um, I don't remember the tour, but I know I know of him. He's a very famous this, like EDM the show. It was like this visual show. It was like these cubes. I, oh I yeah, started. yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool yeah, as fuck. So that a projection map, crazy cube. Like not. Um, it was very like abstract and uh, um, asymmetrical. But really, yeah, yeah, totally, and really beautiful and well done. Yeah, I remember. And that. like, Velo like blew up off of that. Uh, I mean, like, Velo did that cubes? Mapping. No, he didn't do the cube. He yeah. did those cubes? Yeah, V squared. No the... way. And I only know that because on the ride across the Bay Bridge, uh, Matty Dolan, the guy that was running, uh, the guy running Obscura, he was like, he was like, you know about the, and he named that show that I can't remember the name of, you know about that? And he was, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, that's why you're here. And he's like, we passed that up. Hmm. It would have been, I can't believe it. We, we fucked up. We got to do something better. And they did something better. Right. Like way better. Like the, that beat show, like a thousand faces tour on like a content level. I mean, as a show, it's, it, it was amazing. Like every song and there were a lot of them were done by a specific artist or whole like company of artists. And every piece was like a beautiful, like, really well done done thing like like for instance the song that they did with les claypool was a les claypool it was a the whole thing was claymation and it was done by like primus's claymation guy wow um uh what was his name uh, uh, anyway it, it, like they did that and then another one was filmed all on um 
miniature sets. So like, oh, cool. I mean, they had like tracked cameras moving through like. So it wasn't just like the the, the usual visual motion graphics. No, show. not at all. Not in the least. Like every single piece was like by a by a a, a beast in their field. Field. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was incredible. Like the show from a content perspective was like really 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 good. But yeah, the point of saying it was so good was to say that. Um, people would would come up and be like wow you're amazing <laughs> and i could never accept the compliment <laughs> because like it wasn't me right you were um, just djing well like i was i was like running it and making the show work but <clears throat> like it was the content like people were impressed because of like the quality of this stuff and and it was so funny people would be like wow and, and every time i'd just be like yeah it wasn't me and i'd start explaining everything and nobody wanted to hear that they're just like Say yeah thank you. like you're the guy at the front of house pushing the buttons i want to i want to know that actually um i think i'm thinking of another question now with um in terms of vjing um did it feel weird to you because I, I i always like I never felt weird about playing, like mixing video, especially of other people, until I started making my own loops. And then the second I started making my own content, I'm like, oh, I don't want to play anybody else's stuff. It was almost, it was a little bit of an mm. ego thing, in, I think, in my, when I was younger, of like, um, oh, it's not me unless I'm making the content. But for years, for maybe like four or five years of my early VJing career, I was only playing, you know, loops and content. And yeah, I scoured the internet to find interesting things and not just Resolume stuff. But most of what I was doing was using clips in smart ways and, you know, and, and doing it in like a, in a unique style or whatever. But I had this very like strong shift of like, oh, I'm not a real artist if I'm playing somebody else's stuff. And, and in retrospect, I think it was very silly and kind of um, immature to think that way. But... Yeah, did you do you ever have that feeling? Was it ever like a imposter syndrome ish kind of vibe, or did you just kind of imposter be like imposter syndrome for sure? But I never had like an issue with um, taking content because there was always so many people doing so so much more egregious things all around me. <laughs> right, like right. it was insane. Like people, you know, like yeah, most people were doing that, but like when I did it, you couldn't tell. What I, I would never just like steal somebody's content and then just throw it up. Right. You know, like I'm like also along with that stolen some weird black and white video and turned that into a mask and made something cool out of it. Yeah. No, like, like it's funny because I remember the feeling of like, oh, I'm an imposter. But at the same time, I was like, wait a second, I'm actually being super creative by mixing all this stuff. And then when you add mapping into it, then, you know, then it's... <laughs> <laughs> then it's um then it becomes even more of a creative endeavor because you're choosing where to put things you're, you're really like i think when mapping comes into the picture even if you're using loops it's irrelevant like the mapping and how you're using it you're painting a picture it's almost like um a photoshop you know you're just taking things and totally. putting them all into each other um totally yeah and like look at look at like the whole time you're doing it you're yeah. doing it yeah for a dj for yeah 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 well, the, well i mean the, <laughs> The performance aspect was Dude, always playing other people's songs. So yeah, like, right, right, right. Is, oh, in no, that like, sense, what is yeah, the yeah, issue for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> no, I, it's less of an issue. It's more of like, just like, um, no, no, I hear you. How I did you view you. it? Saying. Like, because you said people came up to you and said to you, "Oh, amazing show." Did you feel, um, like that you were not being honest, or, or like, because I guess you said right away, you said it wasn't me, but did you feel, you know, did did it turn you off of the whole experience? And what was it like it was during like the beats? Telling people the truth made me feel really, really good. Right. Because I was like, I, I just, I like legitimately couldn't take credit for it. Like no, no part of me would want to. Mm. And, and like, but I, I also understood that most people would take credit for it. Oh yeah, and for sure. So I felt really good. Maybe not even. That, maybe like, not. Let's like, like you know, not like like rip on people. Maybe not even automatic. Like maybe they're just they don't even understand the depth of it, right? They're just like, oh yeah, that was me. I did it. 
no no that's the that's the funny part is like i want to explain the depth and then i saw like tommy the drummer from beats doing an interview one night and they were like and the videos are so amazing and he just kind of like you know let it let it go by i didn't like credit but he didn't do it in a mean way right but um and he didn't do it to take anybody's cred but that's when it like stuck with me like oh people like have no clue whatsoever yeah. like they're legitimately asking did you make that and i just went over like all the stuff in there like every song there were like 20 plus songs with like unique very well done content it's like yeah so like wednesdays i'll claymate and then you know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like how could somebody make this on their own it's it's yeah. such an insane question yeah well i mean even even today i'm sure even more back then people didn't don't understand what we're doing they have no idea um you know it's like the light like you know i i, I remember the biggest thing was like oh the lights were so great that thing and i'm like you mean the lights or the projection mapping? Because those are oh god, those are different. yeah, no, no. Like, no, no, I meant I meant yeah. that, and it's like, oh well, okay. But it's like people's understanding of what's going on. Like, oh, is that a special projector? Like, how do you do that? You know, and it's like, no, it's just, <laughs> it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Is it a special projector? <laughs> yeah, um, they all are. They all are, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I, I, be, uh, tour, how long did you tour with Beats for? Like, so, uh, like three years, but wow. so two tours and two summer festival seasons. Mm -hmm. And um, was it like a highlight of your career, monetarily, but also like in terms of what you were doing? Oh yeah, no, it was crazy. And like very much like I was like not even interested in like being chill about that aspect of it either. Like mm. like the you know, like like coming in, like I think like some people or or like a way to play it would be like to come in and be like, I'm a seasoned vet. Right? Yeah. You know, like you walk in acting yeah. like you know it's I walked I, in and I'm, I'm like, the VJ. This is crazy. I'm so excited. I've never done this, you know. <laughs> To the point where, like, um, at the beginning of the tour, um, I had been hanging out with Obscure Digital mainly. I'd been staying at Maddie's house and, uh, like, the dude that runs it. And, like, he got a call from David Satori of Beats Antique, who was like, what the fuck? You put this guy on that's never done a tour before? Oh, wow. And he was, like, pissed. And Maddie was like, I mean, well it's kind of a unique thing. We kind of need somebody that there's not really a lot of like touring people at that time that they could go for. And if they did, I think the budget was already <laughs> like, uh, right out there. like, you know, they needed, they needed somebody that could run it and could do it economically for them, mm -hmm. which to me was still a financial windfall at the time. But, um, you know, that like the only other people that would have been able to run it would be like the programmers at Obscura. Cause it was, a uh, it was a all a touch designer. It wasn't even like a finished interface. The whole tour was like like a open node project. Right. Just trigger, triggering triggering videos, triggering clips and stuff. Yeah, and like a but like also all the mapping and stuff. Like that was the other thing. Like the first time I ever Yeah, the first time I ever mapped was actual projection mapping, which which <laughs> no one does. Nobody yeah. projection maps. People yeah. projection mask. There's a difference. Right. Okay, explain the difference. So Beats Antique Show was like actually projection mapped, meaning that the surfaces were the UVs of the of the object. <laughs> the surfaces were the UVs of the object. Like like um the cool thing about that was that like we played some venues where the set wouldn't work one of them in like louisville kentucky i remember just being like yeah it's never gonna even close to fit in this room so like the whole set was all these like little houses on poles and like stacked around uh, the band and we just like took random houses and like stuck them on speakers and shit like that and i mapped it because we couldn't fit anything in this very small venue and the sh it worked that was the surprising part i put it all up just like well, we'll do it because we can and then the the show worked and well, because like the content always made sense mm. because it was not just like 
a masked off final output. Right. It was the UV channels in their appropriate places. So you move the house somewhere. As long as you map it, it's playing the correct right. content. Right, I understand. So it wasn't, even if even though the content was, cur uh, not curated, but even though the content was custom for this specific thing, it was set up in a way that it was modular in a way, so that it always worked. It's, it's kind of like slice mapping, you know, but not with custom content. Um, I l actually love that idea. That's such a great idea because you're, you're getting the benefit of the custom content, but you still have the open-endedness of like slice mapping where you could just, whatever it is, you just put pieces of it everywhere. I love that. It's so cool. Oh no, it's perfect. And you could do cool tricks like, um, you know, like just like doing a simple outline, mm. uh, like on an, on a, on the shape itself, mm. you know, you could do like these crazy visual effects to the whole thing right. without, you know, with nothing. And like, yeah, the whole, yeah. Like, I don't know if I, I don't know, like I, do, do you think that people understood the difference between projection mapping and UV mapping or map? <laughs> no. I literally think nobody knows what the hell that is. No, like, I don't think nobody's so. Nobody's ever projection mapped. There's like five people. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, all those huge building stuff is all projection mapping. But that was I, our projection. I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Like it's, it's the difference of like um, you have content and you're just putting a mask around it or even around different pieces. That's kind of like, it's kind of like slice mapping. That's kind of what slice mapping is. Um, unless you're like using it specifically to like, you know. But the difference is like UV mapping exists throughout the content creation process. UV mapping what, sorry? Exists throughout the content creation process. Yes, yes, yes. That's why it's, so that's why can, it's. That's what's sense. different about it, slice mapping. Yeah. like. Because yeah, you don't know what you're doing. It, slice mapping is really only useful when you don't have the model of the stage or a drawing of the stage. You just get there and you're like, okay, what the fuck do I do? And then you just put pieces together. Um, honestly, like at the beginning of my VJing, that was so much fun. Like the surprise and like, you know, spending like four or five hours at night, freezing cold, middle of the night, you know, people are starting to come in. You're like, okay, I got to finish. But seeing the result of like putting pieces and like different colors and different, I don't know. I love that. But it it mm -hmm. got it got to a point where it's like, okay, actually, what I actually like is like three D effects and lighting and shadows and stuff. And it's like you can't really do that with slice mapping because there's no context of space. Um, mm -hmm. And that when it was like, okay, three D is the way to go. But I love the idea of like using the UVs in a smart way to be able to kind of have best of both worlds. Um, I need to remember that because I, I've had so many, um, nightmarish mapping experiences where, you know, I'm like brute forcing, um, content to, to fit on the thing. Cause my, my calculation was wrong or the, there was no projection study and I just had a model, you know, it could be for many, many reasons. Um, there's always this fight of like, well, if I stretch it and warp it, am I losing the effect? Is it like ruining the, you know, the optical illusion? So then I'll spend yeah. time like, okay, I'll move the mesh and then re-render. Or if I'm in real time, then, you know, you can do that. But then it's like time spent, um, you know, headache, uh, you know, and warping is just like a five second thing. But it's, it's interesting how there's so many different ways to, to map. You know, there's no, there's no like one way to do it. And you can get the same, like if you're really talented at slice mapping and you have good content, you could probably fake shadow effects, right? Or you could probably yeah. fake like structural mapping. Um, yeah, you could totally fake it. It just, yeah. It just me and, you, just me like, and you would know it's fake. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, and also like it just be, it, it'd be something that we talked about recently, which is like, it, it doing that it's like now how much time are you spending like faking shadows as right, opposed right, to just opposed like rendering. shadows come for free because right. you're using lights yeah yeah for sure which is what we're after is just to like make stuff work you know like yeah. like actually work yeah no it's, yeah. it's also like when it comes to projection mapping on buildings or structures the whole idea is to fake uh, not a fake but the whole idea is to replicate that in a computer so that when you project onto it, you're getting that optical illusion. It's like, it's almost the whole point of it, right? Is to create a, a digital copy so that you can get 
the digital copy on the physical copy and get that effect. Like anything else is almost, I don't want to say hobbyist, but like it's just a different thing. Like it's almost at that point, you're not really projection mapping. You're just painting. You're painting with light, right? You're like, yeah, I yeah. have a projector hitting it. I'm painting with light, which is beautiful and amazing. Which that's cool too. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. The, the, yeah. Yeah. I don't mean to like, yeah. When I say like, when I pick on things, it's, it's just be, like, uh, it's funny. Like I like to like pick apart things, but it's all valid and it's all right. cool. It's just like, I specifically would like to be doing the harder, more, like thorough things okay well let me ask you this is I it see the benefit the benefit of that. is it the challenge that you enjoy or is it the no you know it's the end result I hate that part. yeah so it's just the end result the end result something more immersive something more intricate well i think i found something with the like what ableton made um like i think i found something with music that came from just like having music is like a, a thing in my like that I just had right and then finding computers and then multiplying that you're like <laughs> multiply oh, wow things are crazy but then <laughs> I was always playing catch up on visuals mm. so and and after the after doing the beats thing it became clear to me and seeing touch designer right it, it started to become clear to me that like Oh, there is like a way to do kind of what you want to do, but it, it's all like procedural. And then, and at that point, I didn't even like I knew how to do like light 3D stuff um, at that point, but I really hadn't jumped past like uh, compositing and video editing um, and VJ software until that point like i had messed with c4d a bit but it wasn't until after that tour that i started to jump into 3d it's interesting uh, programs and then like yeah and then touch was sitting there the whole time because i learned about it there and it's like touch it's like i need to learn 3d yeah and touch is so so much oh yeah so i love how yeah, that like I love how, you know, you go on a, you go on a tour, you're a touring VJ, you know, two years, all these shows and like, that's inspiring to you to want to learn more. I love that. Like that's, to me, that's like a real, um, hero's journey of like, you're already kind of, you, you kind of reached your pinnacle, right? I'm on tour with an amazing band and I'm doing what I love doing. And then you're like, but I want to do more. I, like, I just... I feel like that's the secret sauce. I'm to... so glad you brought up Hero's Journey. <laughs> that's because... the secret sauce, though, you know? But, dude, the entire tour, Thousand Faces Beats Antique Tour, was um, we had the Joseph Campbell Society touring with us, who's the guy that is responsible for the Hero's Journey. Oh, you know, oh, he, he, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the whole Joseph show Campbell, was like right, a dedication right. to the Hero's Journey, which I had never oh, heard of up till then. And like I'm hearing about it, and then like Joseph Campbell Society is like with us and like at the shows, just talking about like <laughs> that. Awesome. And I'm like, and I'm realizing I'm like, oh, I'm on my hero's journey <laughs> right. to this hero's journey. It was yeah, it was funny. <laughs> You're in a hero's funny. journey of a hero's journey with a hero's. Journey. And then I married the the uh, supporting act, and uh, David um, married us. The David Satori of Beats Antique, dressed as a pope, married us at the main wow. stage at Sonic Bloom. That's awesome. So it felt like very hero's journey-ish. <laughs> yeah, you reached the pinnacle. Sonic Bloom, you did for a while as well, right? You were you you um, did projection mapping there, right? It wasn't screens. Yeah, well, no, I did. Yeah, I did um, all of those things. So the first year, I just got married and played at the played music on the final jam night um okay and then oh and performed i did like a set uh with alicia at the time oh cool and yeah we did a set on the stage and then like and then the next year i did all the visuals uh like next the next year i did the the hummingbird stage with uh pickles my buddy jordan uh -huh. who i've met out in denver is it and is it is it this 
Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. That was cool because this stage we had a background on, so I could leave the mapping. What do you mean? Like this? Awesome. This was a screen. This area. Yeah. Like, we had, a, like can you see my mouse? I don't my behind mouse. it. Like the black. So that. So you could go over the mapping. Black, yeah, so I could leave the map. In. I love that. Like that's something that, that something black. people that people it you can tell if somebody's never done mapping before when they make an animation that goes outside of the outside of the structure. You're like, well, it looks cool as fuck, but it's you're not gonna see it, you know. Yeah. Like you never. I, I love when stages they'll put like something behind so that you can do that. This that's cool as fuck, by the way. Dude, that thing happening right there. This is cool as fuck. That thing right there. That's yeah. like glass and plastic effect from after effects on some like yeah, you just see. regular shattered geometry right like it's just shattered geometry being moved weird and then and i'm like have a effect. Ton of the glass and that yeah that stuff in after effects is so cool you can make really cool stuff oh, with the man. cc plastic and cc oh, glass such 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 cool effects in after effects but it's like for me i i don't want to go to it i want this you know i want the fucking 3d shit and shadows and like you know like all the after effects stuff it i really respect it and appreciate it but i never it never like made sense to me um i don't know i just like it like i got i remember the first visual i made was a video of um like an exhaust of a plane i don't know i had some footage that i caught i don't remember where even but i caught this footage of like um, you know those on the planes, they have the jet engines, they have those exhausts that spin. So I don't know. I just like yeah. took that, cut it, circleized it, you know, so it's just like a frame. And then I use this like tiling effect with like emboss and different like, you know, all these different effects. And all of a sudden it became like this super trippy psychedelic thing. Um, and I was like, oh, this is my this is my new thing. I'll just find footage, yeah, yeah. you know, and like add effects to it. And then. I just got so bored of it, you know, and and, and it's like, oh yeah, no, so no, many I was already sick. Yeah, I don't want to like, Sorry, go on. I, no, I don't want to. I want, I want to like preface or, or or you know add to that by like saying like people that do do that, it's not boring. Don't get me wrong, I was bored of it. Um, people do amazing things in After Effects. Some of my favorite VJs use After Effects. Um, I just, it was like scratching the surface of like creativity. But it was almost like, you know, we had this conversation yesterday of like, I want to know how to do something and do it. And there it was very explicit, like, here's a technique. It works for this specifically. If I apply this technique to a different video, I'm going to have to change. And that was, that's super fun, right? Because you're exploring and you're playing with sliders and you're moving things. But I want to, like, I have an idea and I want to express it, you know? And that was kind of like where 3D made so much more sense for me. Yeah, yeah, and it, it, well, it's so much fun. But here's what I I found is like, it's so much fun. No, no doubt, all of it's fun. Like playing with the parameters of art is fun. But like, it's like, well, why am I doing this? And and for me, and I don't know what other people's answer is. For me, I when I was using After Effects to try and do all these things, it wasn't because I had some love for the process. Right. It was because I didn't know how to do anything the thing else. I wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, I can make stuff that looks cool, and people will be like, "Brandon, you're worth it," and that's neat. <laughs> but like, uh, you know, like it wasn't. It's just like then you spend like years just to like working on thing, and you're not to the point that you were trying to get to. Yeah. So that's that's why like the effects for me were like a. A, a big rabbit hole the whole thing visuals i wanted to say this a little earlier like visuals to me was like this thing when it came out up at first was like this is super cool um try not to let it take away from everything that you're doing like right. try not don't get sucked into this like, <laughs> yeah right don't get, yeah and it's like, definitely the most um sucking in thing i think that is i think it's i think it's like this i think it's it's different it's different. It really sucks you in and it takes a lot of time, but it is missing something versus music. Um, like in terms of like motivating you to do it, mm -hmm. like music is this, like you're decorating time mm -hmm. and, wow. and, uh, it's just this thing where it just keeps happening. And like, there's this thing with music where you can't stop. 
Yeah, like the yeah. last thing you'd want to do in the world is stop, and you like can't do it fast enough, and you can't. Because it, it's just so much more happening in the moment. There's this motivational level of it that just doesn't have to exist. Mm. Whereas with visuals, you have to be like sober. Right. Like, like Focused. here we go. Yeah. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to take the. I'm going to connect all these disparate thoughts and try to make them into something. Mm. It's, it's very different. But I mean, again, that could be like, because also my idea of, I mean, like also it could just be like, what do you have as a history with this? Right. Like I, I would imagine visuals will feel like that to younger people. Well, even, it, you know, it goes into an interesting um, place of like, and I, it's not like a versus thing. It's just a, you know, a real time visuals, um, you know, versus like um, rendered stuff, which is like, you know, another thing about After Effects was like, if it doesn't look good, you're fucked. You just wasted all that time. You know, I didn't have the 3090 back then. Um, yeah. And like to kind of, uh, uh, connect it to what you're saying like there's two types of real time right and i i do both like there's the real time where you have the node graph open and you're fucking around super yeah. experimental you're like finding new things and that's like really exciting but it's not as flowing like music like you said because it's very you have to be sober you have to be very laser focused like if i connect this what's it gonna do if i connect this what's it gonna do and then something breaks and you're like oh fuck i have to go back that's like one type yeah. of real time I feel, and it's very specific and interesting. But then there's another um, aspect of it, which is what I'm, which I feel is my my personal natural progression of making a rig, and that rig is generative, it's procedural, it's always changing, it's always unique, and I have control over very specific things that when I play with them changes something drastically, and I don't even know what's going to happen. When you but, say making a rig, what do you mean? So for instance, like, let's just look at this scene, right? This is like an unreal scene and the lights are turning around, but they're also um, generatively yeah. moving up and down and spinning. And like, we can even see right now, like sometimes it doesn't look so good, but sometimes it looks interesting, but it's always different. So for me, like the, uh, and, and, I, and another example is like in modem where I have, um, or not in modem, just in general, I have these big Merkabas and there's like a, a, sim, a simulation happening um, and I can control the simulation and different aspects of it, right? So that's like a rig. Like I spent weeks building that. And once it's built, I'm not going to fuck with it. Like in a show, I'm not going to go into the node graph and fuck with it because it would be detrimental and it would be very scary. But I do have a lot of controls that I set up pr beforehand to be able to, fu to be able to mess with it. Um, and for me, it's like almost like an, it's like I'm building my own instrument and then playing my instrument. And for me, that's like, that's what's really interesting. It's really not uh, a great creative flow because you have to kind of program, right? Like the creative part of it and the flow of it is happening when you're performing it. When you're building it, it's very technical and very like, you know, foreshadowing. I have to think, okay, what is going to be cool to play with? What is going to be cool to have generative, right? Um, mm -hmm. but I think that that's like kind of a very interesting marrying of kind of like an instrument, right? Um, cause like, like taking loops, adding effects is not really an instrument. You're, you are performing live and there is an aspect of like the performance as an instrument, like, you know, on beat, hitting the buttons, playing the thing, listening to the music, but you're just adding effects. You're adding like a loop, uh, um, uh, an effects pedal right in between your guitar and the amp. But building like a real-time generative scene is like the guitar. You know what I mean? So I, I exactly. feel like there's something to that. It's it's like it's a totally different thing, and you and you and it there is pros and cons, right? Because you're kind of stuck now in this thing. You have a guitar. You can't make a guitar sound like a a drum. I guess you could, but you know it's not really like a smart thing to do. Um, yeah. But there is the aspect of like, okay, I'm actually playing an instrument that's alive. Right. If I twing the string like that, if I turn the knob faster or slower, the generative aspect of it changes, you know, mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy that. Yeah. And there are attempts to like hit that again, but we haven't really like it's it's funny, like all of this is in its infancy. You know, like I think that I think that when all is said and done, musical instruments will be a smaller footnote than anybody's prepared to accept. You think so? 
Yeah, I think they'll lead in. I think that they're just a very early version of something that everybody will have access to. Mm. Um, it's sort of more like a generalized thing. Like, like it's a it's a mode of interaction that we found through musical instruments, but it's much more commonplace now. Like it used to be exclusively the domain. You know what was a big mindfuck? Mm. Is like after many, many years of trying to make like audio visual content into a show, um, you know, and like using, um, you know, like getting into touch and stuff. And like, you know, you the first thing you realize is like, oh, touch, like in the explanation, they're explaining the timeline and like, this is an, <laughs> an engine, this is an engine. And and then like game engines start taking effect, right. and like at some point it just becomes like I never liked video games. I all right. At some point I just stopped playing video games. I didn't never like them. I just at some point I, they just felt like dumb to me. Like you're just doing some weird thing that somebody made for you to do. It just it wasn't fulfilling <laughs> after a while. And yeah, it felt like responsibility. Like it's like go collect these. It's like fuck you. I don't want to collect anything. <laughs> like I want to sit here and hang out. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and like, so anyway, like it was very shocking to me when the answer to the thing I had been trying through like darkness to find uh, after many, many years of like, how do I make this audio visual performance thing? It's like, oh, the answer is video games. <laughs> duh. Right. 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 Duh. Yeah. Like, duh. That's yeah. Duh. Answer. Right. It's a duh because it's, you know, what is a video game? It's just literally uh somebody's like um instrument right and you're playing his instrument yeah. or their instrument whatever yeah. it's really like that i think that it's a really interesting point because we are in like a really weird place right where like notch exists and touch designer exists and like these are tools that are they're built like a video game engine but they're not for making video games and i'm so mm -hmm. i'm so intrigued to see where this goes you know because it's like as much as I love, as much as we love Unreal, and we've you know pretty much built successful careers because of Unreal, um, yep. it's a fucking bitch to make anything interesting or abstract in it. And like when you do, and when I do, mm -hmm. I feel really smart and I feel very fulfilled. But sometimes I'm like, fuck, this is so ridiculous. Like this is not made for this, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah and you don't get lost in it the same way. Yeah, you don't get lost in it, right? Because you're you very know, like. Uh, you'll be a notch right yeah you'll be a notch and like you just the lost. next day you're it's the next day yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know like we've sure. been screwing with these things for so long yeah. and having the most fun there's no complain of complaint about screwing well, with these when things. there's when there's bugs and things don't work the way they should it's annoying sure. but yeah I, I, yeah like like going deep into a rabbit hole and notch is it, it's it's very pleasurable you know yeah. it's very like yeah, I mean, I think it's built in a way that was kind of like an like almost like a synthesizer in mind, right? Like, um, oh, totally, totally. Like taking like, but 3D... there also are limitations of it because yes. of that. Yes, like Massive in limitations. every, I, I like this. If anybody is a notch person out there and a touch person, uh, it's like, what is touch designer? And it's like this series of like very small, um, generalized ideas that you can add to make anything you want right versus Con right like, like techniques and low. concepts like but but the full-on base of it like add but multiply notch is like is like here's a node yeah. that does very specifically <laughs> maybe these three things that people are always trying to do <laughs> yeah, and yeah, can't yeah, yeah. Do. yeah and it's just and, one and node and that's all it does yes that's all it does and then what's the downside right like so for instance like um reaction diffusion right there's like a node reaction diffusion fucking works amazingly yeah. looks beautiful but the only control you have over it is like how much circular pieces or how much lines you're gonna have and that's cool right but like reaction diffusion is fucking an endless pit of things you know yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah yeah i that's always with notch and this is gonna bring me to another question for you um you know Touch Designer is so unique in that sense that it really is like a toolbox for visual <laughs> graphics and, you know, um, creative like uh, endeavors with audiovisual. Um, why do you think like 
why do you think it's so unique and what do you think derivative um, it's funny how i wrote the question here i'm not going to say it but what do you think do you want to say greg hermanovic is god is that what you were going to say <laughs> he definitely is god it was it was more of like i'm shitting on other things here but i'm not going to say it but like what do you think differentiates derivative and si i think side effects is in that as well from other companies i'm not going to name but you know what is it what is what is special about touch that makes it such a fun touch is your dad man touch is your dad <laughs> yeah like like all these programs are like like unreal is like is like your your buddy getting you into drugs <laughs> Right, like Unreal's like look Unreal's what you can like, do. Ah, like, like here it is. Look at all this shit. It's crazy. Yeah, you can have it. It's like a video game. We made it and then discontinued. <laughs> look at the it. ray you tracing. <laughs> yeah, look at it. It's all set up. It's ready to go. Start it. You have everything. You can dissect every little bit. And then touch designers like fuck you. Here's a banana. Figure it out. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, you want to see some crazy program? Look at these squiggly jelly beans. They're <laughs> like if you. If you look at the example project and touch, it's pretty cool what's going on. But it's not nobody cares. Like nobody sees that as like, oh sick jellies. <laughs> right, 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 right. That actually uh, brings it to Paqueta, you know, like um it's like a, oh my God. It's the same idea. That guy. Like look at this. Like like, you know, this guy is is taking images, like fucking noise images and making them into like the most intricate cr like that's all that is is a noise pattern and a feedback but it's like the way he gets there is like what like Paqueta is is like i don't know uh he's like he's one of the most impressive people um i mean he's just his the way he thinks at this point like the way he goes about doing things it's all about separating like color channels color it's channels so cool, man. it's just color it's so cool i i feel like Touch designer allowed, well, uh, not to reduce from Paquetta's genius, because I think he probably would have done the same thing without touch designer, but it's almost like touch I, I designer. Don't know about that. That's well, pretty hard, but yeah. you're like, a part of paint set. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like making noise in his back garden from like, but no, but I think it's like the, the, the advent of touch being able to do, like, the, the fact that it's so open ended, right, allows people like Paquetta to look at it and be like, oh, I know how to do this with like you know sine waves and signals and things but now in touch i can do the same techniques with an image and it's like wow like who thinks of that you know like it's just so wild yeah you know him so like what's hit what did he have a background beyond i'm gonna get like, him on i'm gonna definitely get him on here to like f figure it out because when i when we hung out i was just like I was very young and eager and I just was asking him a bazillion questions about touch designer. I very, I wasn't yeah. really interested in him as a person. We, we did hang out in person and he's a very beautiful person. Um, but it wasn't like, you know, I never really asked him like, what was his, you know, how did he get into touch? You know? Cause I was just interested in like, um, touch. Like, look at that. It's like literally like blinking noise on and off. And you're getting like this yeah. crazy, ridiculous output that's procedural and totally generated. I, I don't know. It blows my mind. What's so funny, though, is like I'll be so impressed with Paqueta and I'll be so interested. And then I think about like just like having like a gig or something and there's yeah, like, like somebody <laughs> after me for like a product or yeah. like an end result. Have you seen and Paqueta like, 12? <laughs> 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 and i'm just like look at what you can do by <laughs> yeah. separating color channels and using uv map yeah like yeah. And they're just like yeah like it Why? is visually impressive <laughs> like but what is the yeah dude that stuff with the melting uv channels and the all that like the uv stuff it's so it's addictive like it's to look so, at that so stuff, beautiful. recursive yeah the recursive feedback stuff he does it's oh, insane it's insane it's insane yeah, it's Love insane. That but that's like... Oh, but yeah. Greg Hermanovic. Wait, that guy. Okay, touch designer, yeah. Remember when you introduced me to Jordan? Or is that... Not Jordan, no. Um, from Touch. Dude yeah. from Touch. Um, Why am I blanking? I'm blanking too now. Anyway, you introduced me to somebody from Touch who I've talked to like a bunch before just like through tech support stuff. Jared. And, uh, Jared, yeah. Jared, yeah. man. <laughs> the whole time I was just telling him like... I was telling him about that I went through this period where I was convinced that Greg, his boss, 
which is funny because like there's no way you view like your day-to-day -day <laughs> boss as god yeah like, you're just like that asshole but <laughs> yeah. i'm like yeah for a while i was convinced he was god but like I think that that touches your dad and it's telling you to learn because the stuff that you'll learn is way more. Am I frozen? On you yours? are frozen. Yeah. I'm not on mine. Hmm. There you go. Oh, there we go. So yeah, I mean like just Greg, that, that guy's just a G and like, it's so interesting to me. Like there's this weird interview with him floating around somewhere. And one of the things that he says on it is um, like, the guy's asking him like where'd you get started with this and he was like i was doing flight simulators yeah. in the late 70s yeah dude and and like and then he says when you think about it flight simulators back then were like the first real time video oh yeah and it's, and it's like from my perspective you know like so deep in you know like being born when that stuff was already yeah, like dude. you know but, going, bro, you're Greg, like, holy shit. <laughs> Greg was on yeah. some really crazy shit. He, before the flight simulators, okay, before even computers existed, right? He was fucking making a simulator for the moon rover so they could practice using the moon rover like in on Earth. And, and it was like before graphics existed, before any computers existed, they just built everything in binary, like super, super, super like... OG shit and he was telling me like they were like how do we represent this in 3D like in, in they didn't even have the word 3D like it didn't even exist the concept of 3D right <laughs> yeah. and he's like, yeah, yeah. he's like well the shape is a box the moon rover is a box and uh, if we can just he's like if we could just draw a polygon from here to here if points from here to here we can fill in the the, the points with a polygon and he's like he's like and it was so simple you know, and this is like, who thinks of this shit? You know, it, meanwhile, he's like calculating like the physics of the moon to be in a simulation. You know, it's like, what? Like, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking yeah. about? Imagine, yeah, yeah, imagine yeah, going yeah. to NASA and being like, okay, we're going to draw points and then generate a polygon. And that's how we'll simulate what it looks like. And they're, and they're like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, I just need physics simulated, you know? And he's like, no, but I want to make it visual. <laughs> you know? It's like so crazy. Yeah, no, touch is really, is really a, uh, an amazing thing. And like, and Houdini, you know, both of them are. Yeah. Are let's, let's sister. go, let's go into Houdini a little bit and then we can um, see what you have prepared for us. A uh, big part of the podcast is that the uh, guests um, share their screen and kind of give us a little bit of an intro into their lives and kind of what they're doing. Um, so Houdini, what, what excites you about Houdini? What's like the, what's the, what's the boner aspect of Houdini? Proceduralism, proceduralism from end to end. It's like um, you need it. It's, it's in it's integral. And like, the funny thing is, is like, I don't think Unreal, Unreal's so funny in the way that it, like, touch designer is approaching you and it's like, listen, you got to go to class first to learn what these words mean. <laughs> and Unreal, like, I teach Unreal. And the way that we teach students, we never even explain, like, floats and integers and shit. But we're like, yeah, throw in one of these green little node things, you know, <laughs> and like, we kind of like branch out, we like gloss over conceptually if somebody asks, but like you don't even tell people what's going on. And, and there's something about like, yeah, there's just something to like uh, unreal. Okay. Where I was going with that is unreal is largely procedural. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's something like nobody ever talks about, but that is kind of nice about it. Like you almost, you, you don't do very much destructive. Unreal. Well, yeah, I mean, any any real time interaction is going to be procedural in nature, just because you can, you know, you're not you're not locked into anything. Yeah, it's just that you have to create the asset first, and the asset mm -hmm. itself needs to have those procedural control things. And it's not about like it's about because like for anything to work in real time, it sort of has to be procedural. That's like what the world is, right? right? Like it's, it's a system. It's a, it's, it's alive. Mm -hmm. You have to make something alive, mm -hmm. you know, like that's the crazy part. Like, like all this stuff is little living things and mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what's cool about it. That's why Houdini's cool because at the end, through all the BS, you're actually going to be able to make something real. And then the other part is you can actually like, 
you have the potential of performing any task that you would like to and everything that you learn um, matters yeah whereas like i could learn uh, the the way i got into c4d was i uh, you know was using my you know my i was using c4d which i can i just be i can be honest on this podcast right yeah, of like, course well, so well, i stole c4d <laughs> Wait, no. yeah. so i had stolen c4d we'll, we'll edit we'll edit that out okay <laughs> um and then i had to you know mix it with my you know theoretically expensive copy of real flow and my theoretically expensive <laughs> copy of x particles, x particles. <laughs> i didn't know you can and, i didn't know you like, can um uh, i don't know they had cracks for those i thought those were like heavy licenses i know cinema 4d has i mean i don't pay for cinema 4d oh no i think x particles what you couldn't actually crack uh for a really long time mm. uh, and like it didn't matter because that that drove me in the direction of like just like well okay I started to look at like, okay, well, like I can't, yeah, I think that was actually what did it was like, I can't steal X particles and I like what it does. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, Houdini. And then in Houdini, it's like, oh, well, like real flow is like far yeah, exceeded. Right. That was like water stuff. And it's yep. like far exceeded. And like X particles is a goddamn toy. Mm. And this thing is, is like, everything that you learn in houdini it doesn't matter like houdini could disappear it still like matters that you learned that stuff because you're doing something you're not like you're not like telling you're not just telling this proprietary one thing how to mm -hmm. use its interface that dumbs down the control system mm -hmm. so it's easier for you as an artist yeah you're making you're doing it and and that's important yeah yeah i want to i want to like, just um um, hammer home the concept of what we're seeing because we're, we're, we're kind of talking about a um, you know it's, it's the same similarity between like a notch and a touch designer or whatever you know Houdini and cinema is like having uh, the open-endedness and being able to speak a language right of the software is very powerful versus like being um, chaperoned or being like handheld you're not really learning a language. You're learning how this specific thing works, and I just want to. I, I mean, we've been we've been kind of hashing that out, and I, I I totally agree with this, and I think that that's very important to differentiate. But I think that we ourselves, both of us, kind of started at the former, right, or at the latter, of kind of like I need my handheld. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what to think of what I'm doing. Um, so I think that you know, these type of programs um, have a lot of um, merit, you know, they're almost, they're oh, yeah. almost like oh, a yeah. spark uh, igniter, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, no, 100%. And like, yeah, I don't even mean to talk shit. I just like, for me, it just, I want to get to the point where I actually know something. Uh, and that's it. Like, it, it doesn't, and it's just to be able to do better at um at creating what i want to create yeah and not making sacrifices because that's yeah. a big thing i feel like it's just so easy to just get caught on a on a just a long slope of just trying to do something that you weren't even trying to do when you started oh yeah yeah and it's a, it's also the yeah. same argument of of real time versus uh you know uh, offline content of like for both of the things you're gonna have to work a lot but the real-time one, when you finish, you have a thing that is always new and changing. And the render, it may look better, but you're stuck with it. And it's like, for me, it always made, like, it never made sense to spend time rendering when I could do the same exact spend of time, but my end result is now totally open-ended and, and beautiful. And, I, and I, again, I'm not shitting on, on rendering. Like, obviously, there's a lot of benefits. And I, and I find myself oh, yeah. rendering a lot um in yeah in, you me know, too. In, in my industry you get the best looking stuff still yeah but it's it's not gonna be that way forever yeah well i mean i think the 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 real um the real winning is when you use unreal to render offline because what you what you made is infinitely changeable and configurable but you're getting like the higher quality render 
I think that's where like the, and th I think that all softwares are going to be eventually be that. Like, you know, Blender has EV, um, you know, Octane has its new thing coming out at some point. I don't know when, but that's kind of like, here is the highest form of rendering, but here's also a real time renderer attached to it, which I, you know, yeah. I feel like it, talking about exploration and finding like your, you, you know, what you like, that's the best way to do it, right? It's like when you have a, a, a real-time feedback. It's like music, right? Like you play a string, you play, you strum, you get the result, right? Whereas like something like After Effects, there's no strumming. There's like, there's uh, writing sheet music and then hearing it, right? Which is like a totally different experience. Um, again, not better or worse, just different. So, okay, so we, we, we're in Houdini land. We're talking a little bit about Houdini. Um, you, you, you know, you express kind of like where it came from, how you kind of got to it from Cinema 4D. Um, before we jump into showing what you have for us here today, um, what are you currently working on in Houdini now? Like what is, what excites you about Houdini now after you've already kind of explored it and gotten deeper into it? Right now I'm like learning all the stuff that I always put off, um, that always just seemed too too difficult mm -hmm. um i'm just doing it because uh it's it's not too difficult i was just being lazy <laughs> and wanted to, and and wanted to classic get, wanted to get to the outcome too and so lately i've just been trying to force myself to do all the things like i use houdini plenty but and like yeah i can procedurally model but I don't procedurally model anything. Like I, I, I use it. I mean, I procedurally model, but I don't like do the full blown procedural, which is like, you know, I'm going to take this little piece of input data and then I can plug different little piece of input data and make different things. And they're what I want them to be things that I wouldn't know how to make with other software. Mm. So, so I've just been trying to learn like, the procedural part. I've always put off rendering in Houdini. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to get down. I don't know that I'll do it. They have Karma now, which mm -hmm. is really nice. It's like their, it's, uh, it's like Octane basically for them. It's a GPU. Yeah, it's GPU. Uh, yeah, GPU bound, yeah. render. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. And, and it's apparently uh, pretty fast. I haven't pushed like enough varied things to really have an opinion mm -hmm. on it yet. But it works nice. Um, so I wanted to learn that and I wanted to learn uh, like chops in Houdini because mm -hmm. like I love chops and touch designer, but it's a far different thing when those chops aren't raw input. Mm -hmm. So in Houdini, it's interesting. It's it's way more like using a synth uh -huh. when you're using chops. Because like in what way? you're really nothing. So you have to like create the input signal. So it's like, yeah, like if I'm gonna create right, there's no like there's no certain... timeline playing, right? Yeah, yeah, there is no time. That's the cool part. It's crazy is that chops are disconnected from the timeline. Right, they're they're unbound. Yeah, they're unbound. Opens a lot of possibilities for interesting things, huh? Yeah, yeah, but also like it's funny, like even chops and Houdini, which is like Houdini's like such a funny, like weird offshoot place that is. Um, you know, yeah, it's it's difficult. But even in Houdini, like if you're like a chops Houdini guy, mm -hmm. the other Houdini guys are like, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the big the biggest nerds ever, like learning Houdini is like a, a massive, you know, nerd nerd out. And then somebody's Have gonna... you seen the drawing? Which one? I'll find it. Uh, I, uh, the drawing. It's like a, a like how hard software is. Oh yeah, find it, find it. it. That sounds fun. Yeah, it's so funny. But I just find I just find it very funny. Like somebody who knows Houdini would look at somebody else who knows Houdini and be like, "Oh, fuck that guy. He knows more than me." It's like it's yeah. such a funny yeah. thing, you know? Like how deep can you go into the rabbit hole of craziness? I yeah, and I've like, been using it for years, but it's really it's like yeah, well, it's when endless. people are like, it's infinite. Yeah, it's endless. That's the beauty. I mean, touches touch designer you know, it's so funny because like Unreal has maybe like thousands of nodes, a thousand nodes, maybe more. Touch Designer has, well, like a hundred nodes, maybe like a little bit less than a hundred nodes. You can still, yeah. I've never used all of them. 
You know, like yeah. there, there's so many things that you could do that are just crazy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's just like the, the idea of this like baseline thing of like if you learn a technique versus like you learn what slider to, to, to turn, you're just so much more um, ex like, like the, the exploration is just inf is, is multiplied so much more, you know, exponential. Um, because yeah, you can move the you can move these five sliders into a really specific configuration, right, and get a really cool result. And you can even play with those sliders. But if you know how to build the slider, right, if you know how to like make the slider do like make the thing that does the slider, you're on a, such a different um, playing field. You know, I, I just feel like, and also it's transferable. So if notch goes down or touch designer goes down, you know the technique. You know, I love that. I love that learning a technique like how do you make reaction diffusion not yeah. like how do i use the reaction diffusion node how do i make reaction diffusion you know i feel like that's yeah, so yeah. much more like, powerful learn and feedback you mm -hmm. know well uh, blur and sharpen in a f in a feedback blur and sharpen. yeah well it's actually not even blur and sharpen the beautiful thing about reaction diffusion is it's literally take away something and bring back the same thing over the course of time that makes reaction diffusion it doesn't have to be blur and sharpen it could be um I've seen I've seen reaction diffusion being done with like um, uh, like like uh, brightness and uh, darkness or, or sorry brightness and contrast, um, you know. Okay. Because it's really just you you add so you blur and then you sharpen. Um, yeah. And you take the blur and move the sharp to the blur. Yeah, exactly. You you and remove then blur that. And exactly. Then, yeah. yeah, and then there's feedback and a loop, but it's just a removing something and adding to it is what creates it. But I I just love that concept. Like even something as simple as like an LFO, right? Um, like Notch has oscillators, like it has different ways to oscillate and, and create kind of like, you know, back and forth um, um, cosines and sines. But it's done in a, in a place of like, um, I don't remember what the node is called. I think it's called a math node. But it's, you know, you don't have much control over. You have scale and frequency or, or whatever, you know, the, the size of it and the speed of it. Whereas like in touch, when you open up an LFO or even like an LFO in real life, mm -hmm. there's so much more to just the scale and the frequency, right? There's the offsets and there's bands and there's, um, yeah. you know, uh, uh, like, like, like transforms. And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe this, the result is the same at the end of the day. But when you understand that, you can get to multiple different results in such different ways. I, I just love that aspect. All right, what do we got here? Yeah, no, totally. And, and what you said really like the about the offsets and all the different pieces that you can now control and then the fact that you can then like take like the length of something and yeah. hook it to Manipulate that it. and yeah. now yeah it's just it's insane and yeah this <laughs> is the Houdini path thing so there's you know <laughs> where's Maya, blender <laughs> bds max yeah i've seen different versions of different ones I love, Cinema 4, yeah people hang and then themselves Houdini, they're just dying <laughs> yeah, this bull falling off bodies yeah. so i thought this i've loved this this has been around forever i didn't know anything about it and then i found this i have it muted right now but it's a movie here yeah, i mean it's crazy it. that's going wild. forever like past mushrooms this is the houdini learning curve they're just like <laughs> what is it oh, looking at the end like oh, a fucking donut. Donut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome um, all right, show us what you got for us. I would love to see um, what we can what we can see from you. Um, yeah, so I mean, I don't. I just have like I know what I've been messing with recently. Okay, I know it was difficult for you to find something. Um, Brandon is a type of person that, and you know, I'm I'm not like talking for you, but I I just know you well enough to say this. But you're a type of person that will um, go super super deep into something, learn it, understand it. And then like be like, oh, fuck, I don't need this anymore. And, you know, and, and like that, that creates like a thing of like, okay, where are all like your old projects? You know, where's all the cool stuff to see? And it's like, um, well, you don't fuck with it anymore. So it doesn't matter. So it was. Uh, oh, yeah. They really threw out all my notch projects last week. <laughs> uh, That's no joke. Yeah, just, That's just, literally yeah. no joke. He literally threw, deleted his notch projects. Instead of archiving them. You know, instead of putting them in a folder, don't touch, never look at, you deleted them. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, like, what am I going to do with them, realistically? Give them to me? Nothing. 
You're, Give him to Ovi. You're better at your your son you're when, good he, at when he gets into the notch. You're super good at notch. Yeah, but still, I like to see how other people do shit. It's cool. Yeah, it was fun to share with you because I really all my, all the stuff that I do mainly like I do it. I feel like largely alone, and uh, showing it to you it was interesting because you were way better at notch than me. But like when you saw what I did, you were like, "Oh, because I used it for compositing." Like for I had what, a weird what, for for yes for capacity for iMag do you hear do you hear it say iMag yeah yeah but it's not even like just the you know like I don't know there's something about Notch and the way that it uh here it goes it's opening up Unreal takes forever always there's something about um yeah Notch. so this is just stuff I've been working on well finish your thought about Notch what were you saying there's something about Notch what was that... I saying? Uh, I kind of lost it. There's something about I said, and then I lost my train of thought. Yeah, there's something about Notch that sucks, and we'll we'll just we'll we'll be right back. Yeah, there definitely is. There definitely is. I wrote them so many letters. Here, I'm sorry, I got to bring that back. I wrote them so many letters, like just being like, "Hey, I keep sending you all this money. I don't even use your product <laughs> yeah. anymore. What are you doing oh with God, this dude. money? You haven't done a development in in years, years now." years like, the last development was the ray traced was the ray tracing and the path tracing that was literally two and a half years ago um yeah yeah i mean we we i should have a whole segment called shitting on notch i think that that would be a great segment people would really I would enjoy love to. Uh, I'll participate. i wrote them letters and i tell them i just ask them straight up and they would never have like a good answer so okay the story behind this thing is like mm -hmm. i got brought in to do some like sphere stuff recently okay and uh what you mean the, the, started, the, the msg sphere yeah the oh, msg sphere wow. formerly obscura digital <laughs> yeah uh, formerly madison square garden yeah formerly las vegas formerly, <laughs> uh, so like i i just wanted to know like i did this sphere thing and uh and and afterwards i was like oh a sphere is just like challenging in general like it doesn't listen to anything you want it to do and it's just going to cause a problem a lot so i'm going to just make some procedural things using it mm. and so i just first off started with this tree which i think is pretty cool like i made some some custom i made custom leaves right now it just has kind of like a generic crappy leaf on it just because of um this is like this is experimental so Okay. Uh, export time and stuff like that. But yeah, like to be able to grow a tree like around all these objects like Super this, cool. to me is so cool. And yeah. then like this, these are just lines. Like these, look at the quality of this. Like this, every stone here is its own unique thing. Mm -hmm. And all I did to make this was this is a box right. and like some beveling and then some noise. What are those, copy. um, what are those like a golden, like line stuff? I love that. It's like some I shortest, like, short, shortest path thing. These are different They're So yeah, these are, um, they were just like, how can I use these shapes and derive a cool design? That's super cool. So it's like, um, the way I found these was, um, I don't remember, like, <laughs> it wasn't like a find shortest path thing. That's how I got the, uh, growth. Uh -huh. That's how I got the initial growth of the tree uh -huh. is find shortest path. And I can show you that in the Houdini side here. Let oh, me sorry. open up that project and get this out of the way. I love it. Is there, so it, is it just, um, Wait, before we go into Udini, I guess you opened it up already. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just opening something. Yeah, go on. Um, like in that in that Unreal scene, is there um, besides for like l like lighting and and things? Is there anything else happening in there? Like, do can the like do the branches grow? Is there like some sort of wind or something like that? Oh, so the wind thing. Um, I, like most of the trees that I've done a couple other trees. You want to open it back up on real, but we're not, we don't see it. Yeah. Hold on. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'll open it up. Um, 
it's open. I just have it hidden because my GPU is going wild on this. Yes, end. I can tell. But we have everything. We'll we'll we have everything recorded. It's fine. We'll, we'll I just meant audio wise. Um, oh. Like I can hear it. It's like. Oh, we can't hear it. Okay, good. Um, so, okay, so um, yeah, like I couldn't. Um, I've done stuff with Pivot Painter uh -huh. to get the leaves uh, working. For some reason, every time I run Pivot Painter on this, yeah. um, I've just gotten it like like a day and a half in. I'm like, are moving leaves really that important? Um, <laughs> yeah. It's so so I'm, I'm doing something wrong or this thing wrong with, or I'm just asking too much. I don't know. Like, it's well, a pretty crazy tree. Yeah. I mean, what is the, what, what is the inspiration for this design? Oh, just there's a sphere. That would be hard. Yeah, yeah but I mean, the, just, but there's some crazy shit happening here. Oh, there's no inspiration. It's just like, like what, like what Shapes can I do? And, and I'm look kind of neat. I love, so I, I just, love the 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 smoothness of the tree growing around. Like it doesn't look. I mean, obviously, it's you know, uh, digital fake. But like, it, there's something about the organicness of it that looks really nice. I really like that. Yeah, that's what I love. Like, yeah, like you can't, like you could model this. I oh, guess. you wouldn't want to model it. No, you would use like yeah. a, you know, you would use probably similar to techniques of what you're doing of like, you know, here's a tree. It grows from here. It goes outwards. Make sure to not hit this piece. Like in speed tree, you know, you can but I don't know add all these pieces. You would, like I don't speed think tree. you could do this in speed tree. You could. Ma definitely yeah. not as, definitely, definitely not as, um, procedural and um, stylized, you know, like t the thing with speed tree is, is that it's, it's trying to mimic a, f a physical base tree. So when you want to do anything abstract or stylized, it's a very difficult. You have to move a lot of sliders to make things work. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even know how you would get like that type of, like, just go back to the center again. Like the way yeah, that, wait, this this is a different growth pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love this. Something happened with the leaf export that didn't work. No, even without the leaves. But I mean, I just love the, the, the pattern of that. It's so cool. Yeah. This is a different growth pattern. Like, I loved the bottom of the last one, which I'll go back to in a second. But um, I love the bottom. Like, when you look down, it had this, like, where the tree was rooting from. And yeah. I was like, well, you're never, like, you wanted that part to be in the most interesting part. Right. So I just, for this one, stuck it, like, in a more centralized location this they all come from here yeah i mean it looks really cool it's like it, it it's it's organic like the other one is more organic this one is kind yeah. of more um like you know symmetrical like interesting geometry um yeah, yeah so, i kind of <laughs> i like it more actually but that's just like aesthetically my um yeah no i like this I like one it. more too i would have used this one um to show i just the leaves weren't working yet no also the other one is way cleaner and the other one is more like a design you know yeah um, but this one what i liked about this one is like now when you come over here yeah and it has leaves like in houdini when i looked at it it's like now you're looking out of this glass and you can see stuff in front of the window mm, that's cool which i thought was neat but again like all of this is like <laughs> all of this is like there's not even a purpose for this yeah you know well, the, well will... you're trying to get you're trying to get a job at the sphere you're trying to work do content for the sphere it's a pretty good purpose well yeah but i mean the this 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 isn't going to be content at the sphere this doesn't even make sense for the sphere no no no, no. i know like, yeah well you know? well I'm... like be interesting it would only work on the inside right because you can't go outside of the bounds until right. we turn the background which we're working on it you know we've almost turned all of las vegas into an led but <laughs> oh so, man imagine connecting the sphere to like all the screens and having them all be like one like one canvas yeah, that'd be that'd wild be that'd be wild yeah um, okay the sphere is so have you seen the videos online of people talking about the actual experience? Of course. Of oh, course. it's so funny. I mean, it's... I love it. I, I, I hope it succeeds, but it does feel like it might not be there in a few years. It might just, like, shut down. You know? Well, it doesn't matter because they're already building another one. Another, they didn't get permission to build it in London. No, Dubai. 
Oh, well, who cares about Dubai? I'm joking. I love Dubai. Love Dubai. I want to go there. I love Dubai. Very big fan of Dubai. Yeah. Apparently, according to YouTube, it's socially acceptable <laughs> to do like crazy things to these Instagram models there. So oh, shit. Dubai seems cool. <laughs> Anyway, back to Houdini. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's jump into Houdini. Let's see what we got. Okay. So that's just a little something. There's other stuff. There's other silly things in that project. Oh, wait. I just reinstalled Unreal, so I can't show that part because I have to reinstall the MetaHuman stuff. Um, the MetaHuman plugin. But okay. um, wait, let me find. This isn't what I wanted to show. Maybe I'm you want to shut Unreal so you don't get so much uh, performance hit. Sure. I mean, let's, then, let's, yeah. This is Houdini. This is just learning the the rendering. Like, how do you make materials? How do you put it in and get stuff to work? You know? Love it. That was what this is about. And this is Karma. But what's cooler about this, this is actually kind of a cool little thing. Um, object context. Um, this one is this. And this is cool because it looks like fluid, but it's not. Um, this is just, a just cool wow. little math stuff. Um, Super so cool. it just grows and it's really cool, but like, oh. okay, like, that's really cool. Like neat, neat. Okay. Whoops. It's pretty fast. Right. And, but then like, oh, that's kind of neat. How about we just, instead of that sphere, we just use a pig uh, head. Yeah, we'll use a pig head. <laughs> it's not very kosher. In but... proper Houdini style, we will use a pig head. And I will hit escape and go back to the beginning. And yeah, and here we go. So now we can pull it forward from the beginning and the same thing will happen over this pig head. And you Love can it. see like it took the colors and use them. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just like a drip thing. This will just cover cover a surface. Mm. You know? And it's just procedural. Like, you'd want to turn the pig so it happened out of a different right, place. Right, right, a different place. What is, um, so what is happening? Like, just, uh, you know, obviously we're laymen, but just, just, you know, fast. So this thing is... If you remember. It's using the curve attribute mm -hmm. to drive it. And I mean, it's a lot like reaction diffusion. Then it's blurring that. Mm. Uh, and then there's a lot going on. Okay, so wait, here's where it's going on. Find shortest path. What do we got going on here? I have to like remember. Yeah, it's like a little node graphs. So you have to like remember how you did it. Yeah. I love that. Where is anything? H. Okay, here's a little pig. We can just, that's a fun way. It's easier that way. So, you know, you got your null input. Yeah. And then you have to remesh it. And this really changes the look, like the meshing here. What are you, you're Ooh. remeshing so you can get like an index of points kind of thing? You're remeshing it so that the points, uh, so you have more points. You more, have more points. So you have more. Okay. So like yeah. subdividing. Yeah. So this is the original one. Uh huh. I got you. Got you. And then I remesh it and it's mm -hmm. just more points because at the end of the day, you're just connecting points. Mm -hmm. So. Then this is grouped. Um, so these groups are just made so the shortest end path, the shortest path works. Mm -hmm. You give it a beginning, a start point, uh -huh. uh, and an end. Mm -hmm. And then the shortest path does its magic. Yeah. And here I'll get dots, and it finds, it makes all these beautiful yeah. looking. Yeah, I love shortest paths. It's great. It's so cool. Yeah. It's, and um, you can. If I'm not mistaken, it's um, very similar to um, oh, what's the fucking word? Uh, not not Perlin noise, but there's a type of noise that is based on um, like uh, movement of uh, sorry how how trees their bark is made. Um, I can't remember what the noise is called, but it's a type of noise. Anyway, the shortest path is very similar to it. It's it's all from nature, you know. Yeah, yeah, all no, like, all of this like organic. Cool part. Yeah, it's a cool part. I love. That's also like the craziest shit is like when you really think about like what we're doing with generative stuff. It's literally like 
functions from reality and nature that we're just putting in digitally and manipulating. No, legitimate. Weird, you yeah. know? It's really weird to think about that. Yeah, that's what I know. We're like uh it's like it's like we're little like hobbyists, like practicing <laughs> hobbyist gods. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Like maybe one day maybe if you do good enough at this stuff, they give you a universe. <laughs> Add uh, some noise. <laughs> Yeah, so wait, let's see. This point VOP is where everything's happening. So, so the geometry and the displacement feeds go. in. So the point comes in and this normal color amount. Let's see. It's out there. Not that much comes on there. And then this point wrangle. Uh, main feedback controls. So this is the VOP. It's there a feedback loop? Point. Uh, it's a it's a wrangle, so it's a VOP, so it's just a, a network of nodes, mm -hmm. and you like run it over. So then, this one geometry comes in, and the U of the UV, or the U of this ramp, this is the output ramp that I'm mm -hmm. controlling outside of it. Mm -hmm. it. Goes into this turbulent noise, mm. and then this add and these two ramps. Uh, mix here and then you fit them and uh, and these are all the commands that you get out of there this is just the here I'll show you what all that's controlling damn I wish I had a button for like nerd alert nerd alert <laughs> <laughs> this is all like those little ramps that are in there are just setting up these so that you can control them and ah, you can art direct that. so you can animate See that you I'm can like, animate it oh it's not for animation you can it's animate it you can throw draw it in you can do whatever like mm -hmm. this is like controlling the way that it grows on right and you can do a lot of shaping with these ramps super cool yeah it's neat that's that's just sort of a side thing let's see uh dude that just reminded me the save and open thing reminded me of like the stupid joke that i was making forever it's like yeah. Um, like I'd be teaching Unreal classes or something, and they'd be like, "Make sure to save your work." And I'd be like, "Yeah, if you live your life based on fear, <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're pussy, <laughs> yeah, live yeah. on the edge, bro." <laughs> I don't save. I've been working on this project for two months. <laughs> to leave it open. Oh my god, that's so commit. Cool. That gives me anxiety. Like that gives me no, real I'm just anxiety. Kidding. I would never do that. That's Dude, insane. you know what? You know what I really hate. You're like, it's like late at night. It's like three in the morning. You've been working hard. Things look great. You control S, control S twice, control S three times. You're like, okay, it's definitely safe. There's no, there's no w way that I didn't do it. And then your fucking computer goes into sleep. Have you ever had this happen to you? When like some something happens when Windows goes into sleep versus when it shuts down. And when I sometimes when I go into sleep, then the autosave will like save over what I did because it's still somehow like on in sleep mode and I'll come back the next day and it's like not where I was or like something's changed and shit. Has that ever happened to you? In Unreal. In Unreal specifically? Unreal specifically like weird stuff happens with saving. Yeah. And yeah, there's something like, with like the memory, like the RAM because things are so stored in the RAM. That, yeah. The, the cache. cache and the RAM. And then when you go to sleep mode in Windows, it's a totally different operation where those things are still running. So like, I don't know, I've, I've had like weird shit happen where I come back and it's like progressed. And I'm like, why? Like, I didn't want it to progress. I wanted to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Have you messed with any of the machine learning stuff in touch? Have you messed with any of the... Stream diffusion, you mean? Or no? Yeah. Like, oh, that video the other day, the Torin Blanken. Yeah. Oh, the, I've messed with, um, I've messed with, uh, facial, uh, recognition, like not facial, like, um, you know, a feature, um, what's the word? Feature recognition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've messed with that too. It's like an NVIDIA, the NVIDIA thing. It's NVIDIA. Yeah, it's it's like NVIDIA suite. Yeah. I fucked with that a lot. And I, I, I did fuck a lot with, um, the leap motion and that's all machine learning algorithms, but, but I, I have that. The AI stuff? None of the new stuff. No, I've just been watching videos about it. I'm, I'm actually scared to download it because I just feel like I'll just not leave it for days. You know what I mean? It's so, it's so yeah. endless potential. I don't know. I'm like, like 
half of me is like i'm scared to do it but half of me is also like well because it's so endless then like i don't really have to play with it because it's just a pro like what you know it's a prompt like it'll be whatever i want it to be like okay super cool don't get me wrong but almost like i'm not drawn to it because it's so open and i don't know it's weird i have very weird feelings about ai um I, i'm with you it's hard to it's hard to get into um but like i've been looking at it more like i don't know there's really cool stuff going on like um ml ops and uh houdini are really cool it's like, so is it being brought into houdini as well kind of like the ai stuff yeah, yeah obviously. it's so crazy obviously. and like with houdini you know like like there's like it's like way more it's like oh so like i'm doing a prompt now i'll paint this element right. out and then tell the prompt it. only to do that yeah and so like you can get in and actually do the stuff that you want and yeah. i don't know i don't know i mean i use i use chat gpt to build a whole suite of tools I mean, I, I, I knew what I was doing and I built the suite of tools, but I used ChatGPT to make Python scripts. That's where for yeah. me, it's like, that's for me yeah. where it's like, oh, I'm like God level now because I can script. And like before, okay, totally. if you know how to node, if you know how to node, you understand and you, un and you know, uh, like inside of you, like vicariously how to code. But the format and the way that it looks is totally different. So it's a huge learning curve. But if you know how to code, you know how to ask ChatGPT to make what you need. Um, so for me, it's like a huge, huge beneficial uh, tool for that um, because I feel like I can just, you know, I don't have to learn coding, but I can code now, uh, obviously to a certain extent, right? But um, also weird, esoteric, hard to answer questions. I found. Oh weird. yeah, yeah. Like, Forget like esoteric stuff. stuff. Like I'll I'll ask it things about like what should I you know, what can I say to my sister to make her, um, you know, less, uh, Zionistic or <laughs> that's not, it's a bad joke. It's a bad joke. But <laughs> it's a bad joke. I'm joking. <laughs> what, you know, but, so <laughs> but no, they no like, I mean, just stuff like I'll have a question. Like the other day I was trying to put a Lembics. I was trying to pass a Lembics to who from Houdini to Unreal, which I've done many times, but Often I don't know like what's going on with certain attributes that aren't passed in the way I expect them to be. So yeah. I was just like trying to make sure, like I was like, where what's are where are UVs placed? Oh, um, even like that, huh? In Unreal, like are they on vertexes? Are points are primitive? Like where are they stored? Did it know and the it's answer? It's like it's kind of a convoluted, weird question that you can't just go to the manual for. Right. Or and, even Google, like who, who's asked like, that question before? ChatGPT is like, oh, this is Unreal handles this like this. Was it and right? Houdini handles this like this. It was right. But because I wasn't like, I wasn't asking it like, hey, how do you do this complete right. task? I was asking it like, hey, what this little teeny, yeah. this little teeny thing. Yeah, anything, how do you do that? Anything with like stable diffusion and imagery. I still personally, the aesthetic for me is bothering, but it's very clear that in a year or two, there won't be an aesthetic and that it will just literally temporal. Like the problem is like the temporal, it doesn't understand temporal time, the frames before, but it's getting better. And I, I can't imagine it's not going to continue to get better. Um, oh, it def yeah, it definitely like will. once, once there's no AI aesthetic, then there's, I don't, I don't see any reason not to use it to generate things um you know like visual or imagery like i, I downloaded and i was talking about that sorry stable projectors thing right yeah yeah um i couldn't get it running i think it's the thing about the fact that i like spoof where my c drive is i wonder why in my computer um so it won't it's like a weird hacky unity build thing so mm -hmm. it won't install right i think mm. is the issue interesting i have to figure out how to fix it but stable projectors looks really cool it's like ai but you bring in your 3d model and you can like draw in the sections that you want and you're like oh i want this type of texture for this part and it's like yeah i mean that it's I very like cool i mean it's just gonna get better and better right like when is the when it when can i just like prompt unreal to like add objects and lights and shit like i love that like i i if i could talk to my computer and it could do 
all the clicking for me, I'd be very happy. Like I, I don't like feel that bullshit demo. Did you watch that bullshit Google demo? No, which one? I saw the rabbit. Their... You saw the rabbit. What? The rabbit R one, the device. Have you seen that? Oh yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's super cool. cool. Yeah. No, the Google did a review of see. their like, and oh, it's AI. like they, like they got called out for faking it. They like, they what? like, they're just like, throwing shit in front of a of a camera. And the computer's like, let's play a game with it. Like, right. it's, I watched it and I was like, everybody batting down the hatches, world's about to end. Like, computers just got too smart. And then, it's like, fake. a day later, the whole internet's like, that wasn't real. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah, Thank I God. mean, it's, you know, I wonder, because, like, the AI now, like, all the stable diffusion stuff, it's, it's kind of bullshit. Like, no shade, obviously art is art whatever we can talk about that after but like it's kind of bullshit like it's just it's just amalgamating things that already exist it's not creating anything new technically so until it gets to the point where it's really making new things from its own imagination i feel like it's just kind of it's just like a google it's like a really 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 good google you're right it has yeah. all the information in front of it it can search any imagery and it can combine any imagery with like certain different scales and variations on the pixels but really it's not it's not from nothing you know i, I feel like until it no, gets yep. until it does anything from nothing then it's just it, it's like machine learning just the next level of it and branded as ai yeah um did you are we are we open here? Can we can we check out what we got? Um, I'm trying to find the right thing. I feel like this isn't it. Hold on one second. Let me look. Hold on. Two, two, just a second. I mean, this while isn't you're, the flush. I'm looking for something in particular. Hold on. Just let me. Try yeah, take your time, time. Take your time. I will um, right. say that um, you know uh, this is a new endeavor for me. I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, I want to do more of these with. T different people different types of artists different ones. creative people well yeah i mean more interesting than brandon that's not that's that's a low bar but um uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but you know please like and subscribe comment i want to hear what people are thinking and and um you know how the experience is um and uh i think in the future very soon maybe when this is already out i will uh start a not a patreon for money but a patreon where people that are interested can be part of it um and then i can in the patreon uh tell who the upcoming guest is and then people can also make questions for them um, that's something that i find uh will be very fun and interesting um so yeah yeah look out like, for that's that. a good idea. back to houdini I'm trying to find this. Oh, this is it. This is it. Okay. This the one that is opening, I think will be at least in the appropriate area. Houdini. Indie? Where it's just a breaking down the unreal. Bro, aren't you a, aren't you a pro? No, I think you are in my oh, eyes. You are. Do you guys, uh, I, yeah, I was on, um, uh, these real early podcast episodes are, are fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to be a recurring guest. I think I'm going to try and uh, get you to come back uh, every few uh, every few weeks just because um, you're fun to talk to and we can we can talk for hours. You know, Mr. Bill said the same thing and then he had like dead mouse on and <laughs> now all of a sudden I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, you know, I might have to bump you, but We'll still get to you. <laughs> Dude. Um, okay. Open up, Houdini. We do have to, um, well, we don't have to, but we should wrap up soon because we've been going, we've been going for like two hours. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And I do have some post uh, questions that I want to ask you after this. But, um, Ooh, this oh, looks okay. nice. This I like that node graph. So yeah, this looks messy. Yeah, no, no, no check this out. <laughs> I just learned this though. I just learned that I I see it all the time, and I just I just am always like I don't know how to do it. You just hit oh, isn't that satisfying? What do you press? Shift oh, S. oh yeah. Oh, Dang. look at that. That's sexy. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So it's yeah, like that leap that I had. 
in there. Like, this thing is so sick. This is just, let's see if we leaf can find recipe. it. I love that you call it leaf recipe. That's so great. Yeah, look, that's how you make it, like this. Yeah, that's it. It's just easy. That's literally a curve, draw, huh? Yeah, you draw a curve. And then that's you have wild. roughness and all these other things. Where is the output of this leaf? What's going on there? Oh, update mode is manual. Yeah, that obviously. always gets update mode is manual <laughs> rookie oh dude it's so funny like <laughs> i'll think the whole program is broken but you put it on an update mode manual so you can do things and it doesn't have to think it, for a year and a half know, as much as i like to shit on like software is having bugs nine times out of <laughs> ten it's user error you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like when somebody's like oh this is broken it's like no you just forgot to pl press the button well this thing is super annoying because the reason i had on manuals because it's trying to cook this tree so let me swap to a different mode here where I'm just viewing one. Okay, there we go. Is that is that a new Houdini where you can view different modes at once? That's new, right? Uh, no, no. It's you just like you could open as many of these as you wanted. Uh, that's the games context that I had it open with. It mm -hmm. makes it easier to edit certain things. Mm -hmm. Normally, Houdini opens up in build mode like this. Right. This is... I should have. This is what I meant to just open. But you had two but, contexts open at once, like you had the. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the games, and that makes it easy because you want to keep one open and keep referencing it. Uh huh. Interesting. So it's not new, but um, okay. So I'm gonna turn off that other one because it's trying to build that tree as right. soon as I take it off a of manual. So now I'll go. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Sick. And oh, the coolest part about this leaf that I found interesting. Yeah. Is like. Okay, so if I want to color this whole thing with a ramp, mm -hmm. right? It's hard because you want this part, like the the stem of a leaf, kind of matches the the leaf right. more in color once it starts. But it's like brown down here. Okay. So I'm just sharing the UV information mm. from the this from the leaf with the stem or uh, mm -hmm. the this with the stem so all you do is make the first pixel brown and then you do whatever colors and it just works because the u you the uv is coming from the leaf interesting and then we... that one pixel stretch to be the whole color of the that's so cool could we see it yeah and then when you're in here like yeah it's like a leaf recipe it's so sick here let's go in if it lets us Okay, so yeah, you can control all the little things like the length. And you built this, or is this this is part of like? Yeah, I built this. You built all of this, so you you exposed all the parameters to be able to move and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. See, that's that's what I love about this kind of stuff is like, it, it's <laughs> such it's such a um it's such a unique um like problem solving game because you're not just solving the problem of making a leaf you're solving the problem of making a leaf with specific controls that you want to have you know what i mean like you have to almost think to the future of like oh what am i going to want to do with this leaf i, I just yeah love look that. at this look at this you could just oh look it's simple mm. it's detailed nice oh 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 <laughs> it's cool right super cool and then just like the whole thing is just so simple. Like, wow, that's awesome. And feathers work the same way in Houdini. It's so cool. Feathers are their new thing. It's the way you make feathers. It's very similar, but there's all these like different thoughts into like feathers. Like in, for this, for instance, like one of the things is I'm, this is only one thing and then I mirror it. Right. Right. Like, right. I see. Cause you, the curve is only a certain, is only half. Yeah. But a feather is not like that at all. That both sides are different, and they're actually like mm. they're kind of like uniformly different. Mm. Like they change, but there's always like these certain things that feathers do, like the way they bunch in certain sections up, and they progressively like they'll bunch a lot at the bottom on some feathers, or bunch mm. a lot at the top, and then the rest will be smooth. Right. right it's right. just yeah, it's interesting. It's all really cool. And then this is for this point info thing is so you can make like 150 different leaves out of this one. Oh, it will do like a seed of some sort? Yeah. This That's is like cool. a seed that you can draw in after you've made this. That's so cool. I love yeah. it. Okay, so now you have a leaf. What do you do with a leaf? 
Well, you put it on that tree, but I just came to the point where the detail that I was getting out of the leaf was just like too much to transfer the whole thing. Um, not because of, but there was a, there's a couple specific things about that tree because mm -hmm. it's such an, a weird thing. Like I would pursue it if, you know, to, to finish it, like if it was like a, a gig or something, but I think I got all I needed out of the exercise, mm -hmm. which was just to build the component pieces. And then from there it was like, yeah, like it's a bitch just to get the, just to export the tree alone. Um, and then I wasn't, you should be able to pivot paint it and have all the weaves, leaves waving. I haven't figured that out, but I'm really screwing up the scale to build the whole thing. Like it is like, mm -hmm. I don't really, yeah. So I'm building it all up a fine shortest path thing. Oh mm -hmm. my God. And, uh, let's see, that's, Love that's that. right here. Like the way I was building that leaf every time is right. Oh, what Ooh. is this? Ooh, I love it. I don't even know. This is just a tree growing wrong out of a point. <laughs> yeah, man, you've always been interested in trees. And I the love tree trees. Stuff is, the tree stuff is super cool. Yeah, so this is... It's I guess I'm not sending it. The, I don't know what I'm sending in here. Maybe the input is wrong. Yeah, but anytime I start screwing this tree, we're... If we're trying to hurry, we should just back out of this now. <laughs> this will take forever. But there is a... Uh... <laughs> Where is the thing that I want to show? The shortest path thing. Ooh. Oh, that's right. I have to be in a certain frame. And then it has to cook oh, up till ooh, there. Ooh. Oh, and I ruined it. Yeah, that... But yeah, basically, it's just to find shortest path. And I Boolean a bunch of shapes out of the way. And then find the shortest path again after I Boolean out the things. And, it, that, and, then, it, and then when you add the tree part you control like the way you, you liked how the organic stuff happened like all those all those things like all the geo in that like the weird walls and stuff the the stone they're like saying tree you can't grow on me mm. if you come near me go outside, go outside and yeah. up, over. avoid and avoid. then like, you like the shape that's all about like are we growing towards the sun mm. and like which right. is just a fun right of tree right? yeah yeah it's just a function of trees they just grow like that <laughs> well yeah i mean i know that from like you know uh like i used to live in denver and i afforded my life by having a two-car garage turned into a weed grow <laughs> and um the marijuana plants grow towards the light if you were to move the light like the leaves would bend up towards them there i think the word's photovoltaic no, that's like an electricity word. Maybe it is photovoltaic. Photo. I mean, but there's like a word and that's, that's a different. thing, and a lot of some plants do it, some don't. Hmm. What grow towards light? Not all of them do. I thought. I thought yeah. All of them would do. Yeah. No, it's like a specific like, like I mean, certain plants will actually like grow towards the light source. So hmm. like you can move a light source, and they'll reach for the light, and that hmm. is a distinction versus another. Well, That's there's cool. like a note in Houdini that takes that distinction into and does account. It. That's awesome. Okay, so um, we're we're coming into the end here. Um, I just want to ask you a few small questions. Um, one is like a very okay. Well, first, first I'll just ask you about virtual production um, because that's kind of. I thought you were gonna ask about my gay mom. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How gay is your mom? Um, not very, she not very. She says <laughs> not very. She says when she comes in with her uh, with her butch husband or wife, I guess I don't know. But um, yeah, I like your mom. She's cool. She's I'm excited. Fun. Yeah, she's fun. So virtual production. Um, why did you get into it? Uh, and you know, do you feel like it's a viable solution for the future of VFX and cinema and um, in general media? Um, kind of like, you know, just give us give us your, uh, you know, your your stick on virtual production, por favor. Okay, first question was how did I get into it? Um, I got hired by Melt Creative um, in Vegas and came out and they, and then like I, 
to get hired, they were going for these two shows. And I was messing with Touch Designer and I was working on the the podcast Kill Tony in LA at the time. And and I was like messing with Touch Designer all the time. And and like I had already done all this stuff. So like Morgan from Melt called and he was like, Do you I have these two gigs? One was with like Nokia and one was with like Dell. Okay. And I pitched these things in touch that were in my view, like wild and they went for it what and was i was it? so so the dell thing the no dell what thing did you what did you what did you pitch them okay so what they were going to have me do for this dell thing is i was going to be able to cover the ceiling of the largest room in the venetian with mm. um lidar okay and i was like well i don't know what to do with it <laughs> i just want to mess with lidar so i was like and then we'll just use the crowd as like general noise to draw processes mm. so the crowd will be like any movement the crowd makes Creates. will affect the the room and yeah. the environment and they were like yeah for sure and uh i was like what <laughs> like this is so easy did you say um, yes <laughs> and, yeah what the fuck and then like i went down there and then immediately pandemic like as i was leaving oh. la uh as i was leaving la like they were like like the last night i went out for like the night before and i lost my um my id at the, i left my id at a bar and i was like it's cool i'll just go grab it the next day because it was late mm -hmm. and then the next day they shut all bars down in la oh and God. so i spent the first like eight months of the pandemic with no id and like i had the rent it was crazy but yeah like um like i went down there and the whole world ended but we had LED walls. So I just had the chance to start hooking cameras and stuff to LED walls and got to start trying from there. And then uh, I did that with Tyler Mimoser, who's the man. And then uh, after that, I came to LA and then Diego, who I had met like a year or so before. Diego. Um, I should have a button for Diego. That's just like you say Diego and it yeah, just goes. Diego, who I met while he was driving a forklift. Um, <laughs> That's too funny. Le legitimately. That's so good. This, Diego now is like, you know, like the fucking the, the head of operations. Behind like the, the, the Microsoft build and all yeah, kinds yeah. of shit like that. Like, the fucking man, cool the fucking absolute and, uh, man, Diego Castro, the legit yeah. man. He's a legit man. And yeah. he came out of nowhere. Like I knew he now works with Velo at Excite Labs. And I, I was coming from like, I moved here from Colorado in a roundabout way. And in Denver, you know, like, you know, there are tons of people in the visual field who would love to work with Velo. Mm -hmm. Then I met this Guatemalan kid driving a forklift in LA, and now he's like the most he's valuable the employee the fellow has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, funny. The, I mean, Diego's Diego's story is crazy. You know, it's insane. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to have him on here too. Um. So okay, wait. So, so yeah, that's how I got into it. Do yeah. I think it's a viable thing? Um. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's crazy where it is now, where there's like all the, it's just like the only way to do it is with exorbitant amounts of money and there's all these proprietary things and all these weird companies locking you out of doing anything it was all about the democratization of filmmaking and it's not like that right now yeah but that part will end and there's like a practical aspect of it that of course will stick around like there's no you think so like, yeah yeah there's certain aspects of it are too practical to lose like even if it's not for the finest films like you know the way that excite uses it for like corporate clients there's mm -hmm. no way that's going away. right right and also like the fact that the the heavy investment of the industry into it is so heavy <laughs> for lack of a better word that like it would be crazy to go back um yeah i mean i i, I agree with you i love it you love it's it it's interesting I, well, I mean, I there's things I love about it, but then there's it's also like, you know, I mean, right now it's hard to gauge it. We're coming off like a you and I got into this industry just for it to go on strike right after the yeah, world the ended like a cold. Well, we, we did like a, we, I, I feel like we got so screwed because we did that 
that last year we did that Justin like the first part thing we did last year was Justin Bieber and it was like okay well it can't like get any better than this right like just fucking Justin Bieber and I'm actually looking yeah. for it because it was such a it was such a great like Dude, use no, case still, of virtual that's production the most impressive thing that i've seen like it's the most impressive thing i've been involved with in virtual production like the scope of it mm -hmm. and it was literally diego you, you and i yeah yeah well and milton but like and whatever Jam. um what's that and milton but whatever um you know yeah no there was a team of people building the worlds and stuff but i mean the vp side of it yeah, that, that whole gig was crazy because um, because we were basically, like, given nothing uh, and we had to, like, make everything work. And they were, like, very, very, uh, you know, Justin Bieber only had two hours and we had to shoot three different sets. Um, when they were called cut the first time, I was like, I cannot be getting this right. Like, they did, like, a take and a half and they're like, cut? I'm like... Yeah that's it <laughs> he's like no no he has to go we're like uh, uh, uh okay okay and what was really interesting i think that like you know a lot of it was final picture most of it was re-rendered i'd say like 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 a lot of it was re-rendered um but they used unreal to re-render it at least for as far as i know um yeah. but like this shot a bunch of these shots are final picture and it was green screen so like obviously you have a lot of places to play with it but you know it was very it, like for me, it was like, you know, I've been, I, I was doing already virtual production for already like two years. And this was like the, like the, oh, this is the best use case of virtual production. You have a talent that can only be there for two, for two hours. You have multiple sets that you want to shoot. How do you do it in a way that's not just like empty green screen? Nobody knows what the fucking thing is going to look like. Nobody knows, you know, Justin Bieber doesn't have anything to like react to. Um, yeah. So I thought it was a really great use case for it. Um, I he just, was watching it the whole time. Yeah, dude. The, their, their whole crew was going to monitor and be like, oh, look at that. Look at that. Like that was, you know, if imagine if they were just on green screen the whole time and they were there and they were like, oh, well, oh, I look good. But like, what do we even, what are we doing? You know, like. We did five volumes in one day. Yeah. And, and remember that we had two different virtual, uh, two different tracking um, things. Like, you know, there was, there was the, we had, the, <laughs> we had the, that was so stupid. Sure, was we, had, we had Stipe and um, OptiTrack. And it was like, I don't even remember the reason. I think it was like to test to see which one is better. Um, the reason was like, I mean, I think like. Let's not name I any names like, of anybody. but Yeah, yes. like somebody kind of muscled their way in there for the gig. Yeah. And I remember getting told like they, they, they were there and I was like, okay, sure. Why? And then the whole day. <laughs> One of the tracking systems that wasn't Stipe did not work for <laughs> one reason was not enough movement. It's too still. <laughs> the other was there's water in the scene. Yeah, and this was the, deal. was this, is this the original water? I feel like this is not the actual water. They must have. No, must that have, is the water. No way. The they didn't recomp it? Real? Yeah, that's the water. That's wild. Yeah, they had those giant fans on it, and the water is like tied to other external water. It's like composite, yeah. but he's standing in the water. Yeah. Yeah, that was wild, and we all got COVID. Best part of the shoot yeah, was we all got COVID. I coughed in your mouth. Yeah, last day I was like, I want to just get this over with. And the funny thing was, uh, I'll say a name. This was uh, directed by Cole Bennett. And I had no idea who he was. And he looked more like Justin Bieber than Justin Bieber did. <laughs> like, school Justin Bieber with, like, the long hair. Right. And, like, I remember the first day just being like, oh, Justin's here. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that's Cole Bennett. So I get, that's which so is, like, funny. lyrical lemonade stuff. And I'm not, like, 12, so I don't know what that is. So, like, I go home with COVID, and I'm sitting there just, like, deathly ill in front of hbo and the juice world documentary comes on and cole starts talking and i'm like hey, i that guy from yeah, yesterday that's so funny that's really yeah funny. and then i ended up working around him for the next year oh yeah in the uh and he's a he's a nice guy he's definitely the uh the nicest part of that whole um scene yeah thing yeah uh okay well i guess um my last question for you um is um kind of like a you know a sign off inspirational thing of um 
how has art and creativity helped you in your life and, and where do you think that um, it lies in the universe and the collective consciousness of the universe? Huh. You don't well, have to. It doesn't have, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> art has art has helped me tremendously. Like art's the most art. Art's the thing. It's the whole point. Uh, and, and like we were actually talking about it before, like distinguishing between different types of it. Mm -hmm. But like, I just think it's such a magical, important piece of of the world. Uh, and and then as far as like universally, I don't know. Like maybe maybe like universally is like too large of a scale for mm -hmm. our importance really mm -hmm. you know like like i don't know like maybe humans aren't aren't the end but like who knows maybe we could make ourselves the end who knows whatever but so universally i don't know the answer but for my life it's like dude art it's the best thing in the world totally it's 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 it you know predates uh, the language that makes up the meaning that we perceive as reality. Mm, beautiful. That's so it's, nice. That's really yeah. well said. That's really well said. Um, okay, well. well yeah, I just talk until I get a compliment, so go on. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. I, I, I just want to say thank you so much for, um, you know, doing this with me. You're such a good friend, and um, I love you so much, and I really – you know, besides for being my good friend and um, besides for me loving you so much, I really also am inspired by you and um, the work that you do and um, your pursue, your pursue for not mediocrity, not just like doing a check. So many people just want a checklist and say, I did this, I did that. You are pursuing something higher. Um, and it's very clear, you know, not only when you do your work, but also just in conversing with you. Um, and that's kind of uh, what always gravitated me towards you. Um, please let me know. Uh, please plug anything you want. You know, um, I, I don't know how oh, useful dude, it's going to be. I want to plug a lot. I want to plug a lot. Alan is the first plug person me. that I um, ever like. I don't know. Like you're like my my visual software brother. Like nobody else uses like when we first met. It's like we use the same stuff, and you're better at a lot of the, the stuff that I want to be better at. And it, so you're inspiring to me. Like you, what you did at Create This, holy shit, dude. Good times. Like, uh, that, what you did there with that studio is what everybody wants to do with the virtual production studio. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of being the operator, like Alon made, to my knowledge, the only like functional, well done projection map led wall uh, our our virtual production stage and and it was this weird low light very artsy beautiful kind of look that he achieved and like all the different stuff that you did to make that like it was i mean seriously fucking impressive man. thanks dude i appreciate and, that and all the stuff but yeah anyway yeah yeah um that's, a plug. Plug. that's what i have to plug i don't know hire brandon uh for anything hire me yeah <laughs> do stuff for you <laughs> I know things. He knows things. Well, this was great. Um, I can't wait to do it again with you, dude. So much love. And um, I'll catch you on the flip side. <sighs> that was fun. If you guys are watching till now, I'm sure you guys enjoyed this. So please like and subscribe. If you have time, go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and give us a review there. It really helps. Next week, we have a super cool guest. He's doing a live visual set. And he's not from Louisiana. He's from New Jersey. Anyway, have a good week, guys. See you later.